Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the final part of our series, What If Gamer Deku Dated Sims. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Spudlord from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Speech, hey what is up? Shouting, oh my god damn toe. Thinking, she looks pretty cute. Quirk notification. Izuku was grinning like a fool, covered beneath his blankets, sitting at his desk, with a few notebooks sprawled out in front of him. Izuku hadn't felt like this in a while, since the green-haired dating sims protagonist had new information on quirks. Not just any quirks either, his future quirks, that have already started materializing. Currently, Izuku only had the bare bones of the information created for now. Combat Quirks Stockpile This quirk passively builds up a reservoir of energy within the user's body that can be used to increase a person's strength, speed, durability, as well as perception time. There's a downside. Since my body wasn't designed to hold this sheer amount of energy, I can't enhance nor withstand the full might of Stockpile. Note, this quirk hasn't had an obvious effect on dating sims yet. Fajin This quirk builds up kinetic energy within the body, which would allow the user to release a large burst of energy that would greatly increase the user's speed and power. But, due to my theories, I believe that the quirk also passively enhances the user's durability while in uses. Since there are some videos on the old web where a person who looks similar to the third user uses both quirks in conjunction without backlash. Note, this quirk hasn't manifested yet, so it is unknown if it will unlock a hidden function for dating sims. Black Whip From what I understand of this quirk, it produces a black mist that can solidify itself at the user's will and can be used for capture as well as attacks. Fortunately, there are videos that show off Banjo using this quirk, so I know it can be used as a grappling hook or lasso. Note, this quirk hasn't manifested yet, so it is unknown if it will unlock a hidden function for dating sims. Support Quirks Danger Sense A quirk that grants the user a sixth sense, or as I believe it, a massive increase to a person's sensitivity to sound waves and vibrations. Since the more dating sims assimilates it with my body, the more aware I become to my surroundings. This quirk has granted dating sims the ability to detect hidden quests. Float, a useful quirk that can let the user levitate off of the ground and glide when moving. With this quirk, there is it definitely possible that I could fly with it, perhaps using Black Whip as a slingshot, or using enough OFA to launch myself forward. Note, this quirk hasn't manifested yet, so it is unknown if it will unlock a hidden function for dating sims. Smokescreen, a handy quirk that can be used to distract opponents for an array of reasons, for either getting away with civilians or letting the user set up a surprise attack or immediate takedown. I think the smoke manifests itself from my body, so it is highly possible my body might feel sore whenever this quirk manifests itself, since it will alter my body in some way. Note, this quirk hasn't manifested yet, so it is unknown if it will unlock a hidden function for dating sims. Pausing as he finished writing the final paragraph, Izuku slowly looked up to his alarm clock, seeing an alarm clock of all might, whose eyes had been replaced by a digital clock saying 4.30 a.m staring at the alarm clock in question. Izuku nodded to himself. He had pulled an all-nighter after heroics training, and now he had physical training to do, it seemed fair. There was a lie, he wasn't at all. Dating Sims, it isn't the time for this, softly mumbled Izuku, standing up and shedding his blanket, shivering as the cooler air of his room assaulted his skin, before Izuku looked down on himself. I have been too busy, curtly decided Izuku, looking down at his school uniform, that had become a crinkled mess, but it was warm. So, my instructor is a heroine, Calmly stated Izuku, merely accepting the fact, since the green-haired dating sims protagonist would only be seeing her a few days each week for a while. So logically speaking, there should be no way Izuku would have to worry about this relationship. Izuku wouldn't have to worry at all. Izuku was worrying a lot. The green-haired teen had thought that he would be introduced to a martial artist of some kind, more specifically someone who specializes in kicking. What the dating sims protagonist wasn't expected was a pro hero to be there, standing beside All Might in his skinny form, wearing her hero outfit. For once, Izuku was thinking the exact same thing as his quirk was, as he silently stared between All Might and his newest instructor, with pure awe shining clearly in his eyes at the sight before him. This would be a secret on Izuku's part, but he thought that the heroine was by far the most attractive and mature out of all of them. At least the brat isn't late, loudly growled the woman, repeatedly tapping her left foot off of the pavement, staring down at Izuku with her red eyes, assessing him for all of his perks and flaws, more so the latter than anything. Stripped down, commandingly barked the woman, her snow-white ears twitching ever so slightly, an annoyed tick if Izuku remembered correctly. 
What? The wilderly asked Izuku, instinctively putting an arm around his chest, as well as shielding his family jewels subconsciously, as Izuku stared at Yuzujiyama Rumi, or more commonly known as Mirko, the rabbit hero. Yagi, this is why I don't deal with teenage boys, they are horned dogs. Exasperatedly grunted Yuzujiyama, rolling her eyes as she looked between Izuku and Tashinori, as if she was trying to put together a puzzle, but didn't have all of the pieces. What's taking so long? Annoyedly snorted Yuzujiyama, impatiently tapping her foot off of the ground, before everything around Izuku froze. Mirko was a heroine. Izuku felt a lot more happier than he had any right at being. For the rational brain, resigned to people who had self-perseverance, the answer was obvious, especially for those who wanted to live and not get their heads caved in by a kick or squished by thighs at Lucky. But, Izuku was a teenager, the green-haired dating sim's protagonist did have self-perseverance, but it was jumbled, badly. It also didn't help that Izuku had a small crush on the heroine. A is the best choice, slowly decided Izuku, taking a lot longer than normal for it, since a small part of Izuku wanted to choose a more daring option. It's not like I'll select B loudly scoffed Izuku, rolling his eyes at his quirk, as something shifted ever so slightly out of the corner of Izuku's eyes, seeing a seagull flapping its wings, as time resumed, and Izuku knew he had messed up. I'll make it a nice show for you, unwillingly stated Izuku, his eyes wide with fright and fear as he saw Yuzujiyama tense up, and Izuku knew his quirk had just screwed him over. H-A-H-A-H-A. At least this one has balls. Amusedly chuckled Yuzujiyama, leaning backwards and letting her head fall back, as she laughed to the heavens, as if she was the luckiest woman alive. <laughs> I'm alive. The wilderly asked Izuku, rapidly patting himself down, checking for any injuries, mainly a concussion, but was surprised when he didn't find any injury on his body. He's alive. Confusedly mimicked Tashinori Yagi, not at all sure what Izuku meant, before it clicked. Oh yeah, Yuzujiyama has a reputation. Happily recalled Tashinori, humming along in agreement with Izuku, since Yuzujiyama is known for kicking ass then asking questions. I don't see you stripping, my lovely student. Sweetly noted Yuzujiyama, a shiver racing up Izuku's spine. Danger sense told him something was wrong, forcing Izuku to look around, until his eyes landed on the source of the danger. Unsurprisingly, the danger was coming from Yuzujiyama herself, who had a forced sweet smile on her face, with her teeth audibly grinding off one another. Maybe, just maybe, Izuku wouldn't be alive for much longer. Overall, your muscles are very well devolved, a lot denser and more powerful than those big muscle idiots, since you've been trained to fight, not look good. Calmly assessed Yuzujiyama, it was then Izuku realized that heroes were a lot more than the public realize, since each hero either created or had helped creating their ideal workout routine, so they had to have a fairly advanced understanding of the human body in order to do so. Your lower back could do with a little work, your legs are more than ready for my training, though you're as stiff as a board. Dismissively grunted Yuzujiyama, making Izuku quickly look down, realizing Yuzujiyama was referring to his posture. So where do we start? Curiously asked Izuku, kind of upset that All Might had left, but the man had promised everyone coffee, which they all appreciated, some more than others. Then Yuzujiyama grinned as if she won the lottery, and in Izuku's short time in knowing the woman, the green-haired dating sim's protagonist knew that Yuzujiyama was a sadist, while Izuku knew he was not a masochist. Have you ever done a full splits before? Interestedly asked Yuzujiyama, rubbing her hands together in glee, while she watched Izuku rapidly shake his head from side to side, as if that would protect him. Hopefully you're tougher than you look. Gleefully chuckled Yuzujiyama, helpfully dragging Izuku onto the sand, where he would perform his first ever full splits. Yuzujiyama was cruel, but she didn't expect Izuku to do it on the pavement. He would do it on the sand instead, where it would motivate him, since sand could be a living hell to wash out, and it was itchy as well. Izuku's eyes were hollow, it wasn't because he had suddenly became emotionless, but it was because Izuku had felt too much, and now his mind was trying to comprehend it. Currently the green-haired teen was standing in the middle of a line, getting himself a cup of coffee as he was recovering from the ordeal from Yuzujiyama had put him through. There's a bright side, mentally responded Izuku, robotically stepping forward, now fourth in the line waiting for coffee, though Izuku still wasn't certain what one he would choose. Midoriya, confusedly asked a voice from behind, making Izuku slowly turn around, fully aware of the fact that a soft, warm breeze was currently brushing against his face, meaning it was a hair when he had already catalogued. It was Takage, the green-haired girl, who he had almost messed up with, but had managed to save at last second. Mentally pulling up his status as he stared at his fellow green-haired person, Izuku took a look around, realizing everyone there was like him, exhausted. Charm, 41. Intelligence, 29. Aura, 49. You wanna come up? Tiredly yawned Izuku, watching as Takage grinned at him, before happily walking up to him with as much energy as a non-morning person could muster, which wasn't a lot, but it meant something. You're so sweet, inviting me to get coffee with you, it's almost like a date. Sweetly huffed Takage, a slight blush crawling up Izuku's neck, as he was fully aware of the mocking smile on Takage's face, the one that would lead to him being teased mercilessly. No, embarrassedly squeaked Izuku, trying to remain calm, but was failing miserably, since Takage was now standing right beside Izuku, with her arm brushing off of his own. 
What would she be like if she ever did develop a crush on me? Horrifedly mused Izuku, since he knew that Takage was the sort of person to tease as others, it was her nature, but how bad would it be for the person she liked? You sure, green-haired babies look cute. Teasingly hummed Takage, repeatedly tapping her right index finger off of her chin as if she was thinking of something, and Izuku realized he had the perfect opportunity to get back at her. Like you, rhetorically asked Izuku, meeting Takage's eyes and winking at her as the green-haired duo took a few steps up, now both of them were second in the line. Oh, you've got more bark than you let on. Leafly chuckled Takage, there was only a slight blush on her face, which was a lot less than Izuku was hoping for, nor was that the reaction Izuku was hoping for either, if anything, this just encouraged her. They sarcastically cheered Izuku, he was about to raise his arms in the air for added emphasis, before winching, his left leg cramping up just as he was about to do that, forcing the teen to stand solely on his right leg. Oh 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 oh, repeatedly mumbled Izuku, sucking air in through his teeth, wobbling on his right leg, nearly falling over, before a hand clamped onto his shoulder, steadying him. It would be bad luck if you fell, right? Rhetorically inquired Takage, winking at Izuku as she did so, and Izuku realized something, Takage was a flirt and tease by nature, and if they ever became friends, Izuku would be certain he would be pulling out his own hair from embarrassment. What can I get the happy couple? Dryly asked someone, the same person who had to watch the two green-haired teens flirt, and was frankly somewhat amused when Izuku's face went as red as a tomato's. Triple Shot Espresso immediately answered Takage, with practiced ease, since she knew her go to drink whenever she needed to wake up, which was every day now because of Yue. What one would you recommend for a person who's on four hours of sleep and hasn't had a proper night's sleep in two days? Curiously questioned Izuku, looking at the purple-haired barista, who gave off the same energy as Izuku's homeroom teacher. One triple-shot espresso, and one venti cup clover-brewed coffee. Robotically called the barista, who had bags beneath his eyes, before he turned around, starting the preparations for the coffees. Izuku's eyes widened, he could hear a clock ticking down inside of his head. He only had eight seconds before the events would finish, so the green-haired dating sims protagonist didn't have a lot of time. It wasn't as if Izuku or his mother was rich by anyone's standards. Their main sources of income was from Izuku's father, who was in America and sent money to them once a month. I'll pay for these, immediately decided Izuku, seeing Takage straighten up out of the corner of his eyes. She was clearly surprised by the gesture, but Izuku simply gave the girl a small smile. If you keep doing this, people might start thinking you have a thing for me. Hauntingly cackled Takage, wrapping her left arm around Izuku's shoulder, before yanking the mail down and rubbing her right hand through his hair, messing it up even further than it was. You look pretty good with your hair like that. Honestly admitted Takage, taking a step back and nodding at herself, as she looked at Izuku's hair, which wasn't as curly anymore, but more wild and spiky. At least Izuku didn't have to try and tame his head of hair anymore, small mercies. Titles. Girls at least think you're cute. After 10 months of training, you can make girls turn their heads with ease. You came across many people, and can tell who's a heroine and who's not. People think you're cooler than you actually are. You can be polite to girls when needed. You're a manly man. You're also Kirishima's best bro. Your hair looks magnificent no matter what you do with it. Currently sitting in the classroom, Izuku's eyes were darting through the air, reading all of the titles he had unlocked, trying to see if there was any possibility of unlocking more, since Izuku had noticed something, titles were powerful. They didn't make him stronger, faster, or smarter, but they helped increase other things, mainly his appearance and how people thought of him, which didn't just affect heroines, but everyone. So, is it possible to get a chef title of some kind? Interestedly mused Izuku, since he was basically a dating sims protagonist. That meant eventually he would marry someone and would have to cook sometimes, but there was also advantages of getting titles in general. I wonder would a chef title increase the taste of the food I create, or would it be some hidden benefit? Mentally debated Izuku, busy staring at his small title screen, which would hopefully one day expand to contain some more impressive and useful titles. Though the title was appreciated. <laughs> Izuku didn't waste a second in dismissing the last one, which would never see the light of day again, and it would only be seen in the darkness of his room, where Izuku would at least read the title. Other than the last one, Izuku liked the first, second, and fourth titles the most. Each of them had a benefit outside of just making him look better, but served a purpose for taking care of himself. The hell you looking at Deku? Loudly growled Bakugu, his bloody red eyes narrow in disgust, as he leaned on the back of his seat, both feet up on his desk, as the blonde-haired teen glared at Izuku, despite looking at the green-haired teen upside down. You're doing that creepy thing again. Bluntly stated Bakugu, grinning as he watched Izuku shrink slightly in on himself, cruelly referring to Izuku's blank gaze and mumbling. Ah, uh, thanks Gek. Bakugu. Shakily thanked Izuku, blinking as he watched Bakugu's eyes widen dramatically, before the explosive teen leaned too far back, and Izuku didn't do a thing as the blonde fell to the floor. Izuku didn't smile when Bakugu hit the floor with a thump that would have been mean. And Izuku didn't have a mean bone in his body. Huh. You're not the lowly piece trash you used to be, Deku. You're officially a pebble now. 
cruelly barked back Hugo, which was gaining the attention from everyone in the class. The only person who wasn't there was Aizawa, and there was a large chance that he was under his desk. Boy, what's your problem with Broderia? Defensively snapped Ijiro. Watching as Bakugu picked himself off of the ground and stood up, staring at Ijiro, and the blonde teen even gave off the aura he was still looking down on him. A few people started moving in their seats at this point, mainly Izuku's friends, who were both bewildered, angered, and a bit curious about the history between the two males. Let me tell you a story weird here, about a quirkless little Deku who wanted to be a hero like All Might. To be a hero one must train and get stronger, do we all agree on that? Arrogantly annoyed Bakugu, smirking as he rested a smoking palm on top of Izuku's desk, well aware that Izuku had now officially frozen up as everyone in the class nodded in agreement. This little Deku didn't train nor work for his goal, all he did was hope for the best, unlike me, who trained for hours every day. And then the little Deku finally starts training ten months before the entrance exam, and luckily awakened his quirk, before getting in by dumb luck. Disgustedly stated Bakugu, turning around before focusing all of his attention onto Izuku, who was sitting as still as a statue now. He'll be a better hero than you, logically informed Itsuka, the unofficial big sister of one at this point, who was now staring at Bakugu, disgusted by his behavior. I don't remember asking your opinion big hands, and if we are talking about shitty heroes, let's not forget daddy issues over there. Dismissively snorted Bakugu, who was now everyone's least favorite person in the class, as the explosive gremlin gestured at Todoroki. In the future he won't go all out to save someone because of a grudge, Deku is never serious about his choices, and me. A guy who doesn't care about your opinion. Amusedly chuckled Bakugu, pointing between himself, Izuku, and Todoroki, one smiled, the other was frozen stiff, and the other didn't care. This horrible thing about the entire situation, besides being put in the center of attention, was the fact that Izuku wanted to cry, because Bakugo had a point, and it was hitting a lot harder than Izuku thought it was. All right, settle down, dryly ordered Aizawa, rising up from beneath his desk, still in his sleeping back, with disappointment obvious in his eyes, as he stared at every student in the classroom. Bakugu, one more outburst like that and you're visiting the headmaster. Todoroki, you have potential, don't ruin it. Problem child, don't listen to him. Everyone else, you could have all tried to stop Bakugu's outburst, but you were all curious, weren't you? Dismissively spoke Aizawa, his eyes glancing between the three students he had personally called out, all of whom were staring up at him. The three students with issues, who also had the most potential in the classroom in becoming the number one hero. As much as Aizawa hated to admit it, those three students would be incredibly powerful in the future, especially if they managed to get rid of their obvious flaws. Anyway, we have something important to do today. Calmly stated Aizawa, gazing across the classroom, he could clearly see the tension building after Bakugu's statement, and the nervousness from him speaking. You to select a president and vice president. Blatantly huffed Aizawa, before nodding to himself, and crouching back beneath his table, where his sleeping bag and special drink was. It's so normal. Amazedly gasped Mina, grinning like a fool, as if Bakugu's outburst hadn't happened. Instead she focused on the more positive aspect of the last few minutes. I vote myself for president. Gleefully shouted Mina, shooting both of her hands into the air, before Tenya stood up and waved his arms about. Is he doing kung fu? Confusedly mumbled Kaminari, while Izuku rolled his eyes, pushing his thoughts to the back of his mind, as Tenya successfully gathered everyone's attention, muting all of the shouting and screaming going on. I purpose we vote for who we think would make the best president. The person with the most votes will be the president, and the person in second will be the vice. Loudly stated Tenya, Izuku nodded along in agreement, watching as Tenya pulled out a blank sheet of paper from his bag and started ripping it apart. Okay, disinterestedly noted Izuku, a part of Izuku just couldn't deal with his relationship with the heroines who were merely friends or acquainted with him, and a part of Izuku could tell that dating sims was a bit sad from that. I'm sorry, but could I be able to use 50% of one for all by now if I did train from a young age, or maybe even 100%? Sadly wondered Izuku, nodding at Tenya as he handed out a piece of paper to everyone, and Izuku merely looked at the blank piece of paper. Staring at the blank piece of paper in front of him, Izuku chewed on his lower lip, mentally going through all of his classmates, most of whom he didn't know personally, so he ruled those out, as well as Bakugu. The list of potential candidates was small, once Izuku factored in their personality, how they would likely act under pressure, as well as if they wanted to be president. Surprisingly enough a guy's name was on a list created by dating sims, but Izuku wasn't going to question it, since the five people on the list certainly had the potential to be class president but each of them would be varied in how they did it. Izuku would admit it, at first glance neither Yuraka or Mina looked like they could fulfill the role as class president. But both of them were dependable, and if they wanted to be heroes, they would have to learn how to cope with stressful situations. Momo, Itsuka, and Tenya would definitely know what to do, and if I'm not mistaken, Momo's family is incredibly rich, so she knows how to be proper, and most likely her parents had her take classes on leading. 
Tenya comes from a family of heroes, so he learned about this from a young age. Itsuka, she like an older sister really. Hurriedly mused Izuku, deep in thought, as the green-haired teen tried coming up with an answer. May everyone hand up their response, please. Politely asked Tenya, Izuku looked up at his blue-haired friend and saw the desire in his eyes, the desire to help the class and protect it. He calmly decided Izuku, writing down his friend's name and folding up the piece of paper, there was no doubt in his mind that Tenya would win it. After all, who could be more responsible and more class president worthy than Tenya? <laughs> Izuku and everyone else stared at the results. Anyone who just got one vote wasn't put up on the board in order to save some time, but Izuku did not expect the results to end up like this. Nor did Izuku expect to gain so many relationship points with five people in the span of time it took to write down someone's name. Midoriya Izuku, 7. Ida Tenya, 4. Yeirazu Momo, 3. Kendo Itsuka, 2. W-O-O-O. B-R-O-D-O-R-I-Y-A for president. Happily hollered Ijiro. Everyone instantly knew that Ijiro voted for Izuku. Not that anyone was surprised, since Ijiro liked manly things, and Izuku was apparently the manliest person in the room. Speech, speech, speech. Repeatedly changed Ijiro, who seemed to be on cloud nine at the moment, as the entire class slowly turned to Izuku. What? Confusedly gawked Izuku. He did not expect himself to win the election. A part of Izuku thought whoever he voted for would automatically be the class president thanks to dating sims doing something. Right, Izuku really had to remember that dating sims wasn't all that powerful at all. Problem child, come up here with your vice. Tiredly groaned Aizawa, still underneath his desk, not even poking his head up at all, well aware that children were excitable when it came to being class president. Hesitantly Izuku got up from his seat, while Tenya stood straight up and marched to the top of the classroom, a small smile on his face as the tall teen turned around and looked over the class, nodding at Izuku as he walked up. Danger sense made Izuku's spine tingle, making Izuku gulp as he walked past Katsuki, knowing exactly where the source of danger was coming from. You don't deserve this, softly mumbled Katsuki, barely saying it loud enough to be heard by Izuku, but it was loud enough for Izuku to hear him and freeze for just a split second. And you do, rhetorically asked Izuku, continuing his walk forward to the top of the classroom, his mind racing a mile a second, coming up with a plan on what to do since Izuku did not want to be class president. Everyone settled down. Izuku wants to say some words, robotically announced Tenya, wildly gesturing his arms about, which made some of the people in the class grin at him. Standing in front of 18 people was a lot more nerve-wracking than Izuku realized. This was in fact the first time Izuku ever had to do something like this without being mocked, which was a lot more nerve-wracking, since Izuku didn't know what to expect. Chewing on his lower lip, Izuku gave himself a small nod in confirmation, his mind set on what he had to do, before the teen leaned towards his classmates, into a perfect bow that was parallel to the floor. Thank you for your votes, I appreciate them all. But, I don't want to be president. Worriedly addressed Izuku, closing his eyes shut, tight enough to the point where Izuku could see colors swirling behind his eyelids. Tenya, can you take over please? Hopefully asked Izuku, realizing that the class was deathly silent. Something that only happened when Aizawa started speaking or when he told them to be quiet. What? Why? Simultaneously shouted everyone in the class. Some of them who voted for Izuku were heartbroken, and by some it was mainly Ijiro who was heartbroken. I don't think I can give what you guys will expect from me, honestly answered Izuku, which was true, since Izuku knew he would be busy now, training with Yuzajiyama would take it out of him, as well as the fact that the quirks within OFA could randomly manifest, so Izuku had to be prepared for those as well. Fine, the class president is Ida and the vice is Yeirazu, calmly decided Aizawa, who knew some of the reasons why Izuku shouldn't and couldn't be the class president, mainly because of the fact he would have to meet a lot of people in the older years, and some of the class presidents and their vices were girls, who Izuku could potentially catalog. Now, everyone be quiet, it is a study period until break, loudly grunted Aizawa, sinking beneath his desk once again, no doubt he wouldn't be seen until the next class at some point. I'm going to put together a list of what you can actually do. Exasperatedly decided Izuku, dating sims was a bit more complex now, due to the fact that they were both still discovering functions that neither knew existed, as well as the fact that the other quirks within One for All were given DLC as dating sims put it. The barest flicker of green electricity ran throughout Izuku's body, as the green-haired teen used One for All at 1%, in order to increase his writing speed, as well as get his body used to doing finer things other than fighting with One for All only tearing the pages in a few places. Not that it mattered really, Izuku nodded at himself, as he stared over the page that had been dedicated to dating sims. Quirk, dating sims. Description, dating sims is a sentient quirk that is based off of a dating game. It can catalog heroines, who are girls that are into guys like me, and keeps tracks of their relationship with me, updating it whenever I do something that the girls like, increasing my relationship, or decreasing it whenever I do something bad. Functions, sensing, dating sims is able to lead me to heroines, who I have met, as well as point out potential heroines. Information gathering, dating sims can gathering information on heroines, giving me a basic backstory when I meet them, it updates and gets more personal the closer I get to the heroine. 
Dating Sims also gives the heroine a title, which can help increase the amount of relationship points I get if I do something specific. Titles. After I do an action that affects people's view of me, I sometimes get a title that can affect my appearance in some way by either making me look cooler than I am or making it so I don't have to brush my hair again. Stats. Dating Sims keeps track of my charm, intelligence, and aura and translates them into numbers. The higher they are, the better they are. Charm is my ability to attract people. Intelligence is my knowledge on girls and how they act, and my aura is. My range of influence. Gallery. Whenever something important happens with a heroine, I hear a clicking sound inside of my head, which means a photo has been taken. I can view the galley by thinking or saying the word gallery, and there doesn't seem to be a limit to how many photos can be taken, but I cannot control when it happens. Quests. This is a new function added due to dating sims assimilating danger sense. Whenever I complete quest, I am rewarded relationship points depending on what I've done. So far I'm not sure exactly how a quest is assigned, but dating sims think this function will be cleared up when he reaches the 50% mark on assimilating danger sense. Body changes. It is apparent that dating sims has changed my body slightly, I still experience pain, but it only lasts for a few seconds, and it appears as if my body is evolving to withstand the strain of multiple quirks within my body by updating my cells. I read screens, that's how I know you're talking to me, it doesn't really convey sarcasm. Deli pointed out Izuku, rolling his eyes in exasperation, before the screen in front of him blipped out of existence for a brief second, as a new one took its place. Quoting SpongeBob SquarePants, truly, Izuku knew he had a quirk everyone would be jealous of. Izuku let his head hit the table, defeat clear in his eyes, fully aware of the fact that dating sims was getting smarter. Having learnt sarcasm by randomly capitalizing letters, truly the pinnacle of what could be offered after nine generations since quirks first manifested. Sometimes Izuku felt like he had drawn the short straw in life, stuck with a sentient quirk that had learned sarcasm, and a quirk that broke his bones, truly his luck was uncannily bad. Izuku couldn't help but let his eyes wander over towards the girl in question, who had vines for hair, and if Izuku remembered correctly, she was a devoted Christian, which was something rare these days, since religion seemed to have declined since quirks first manifested, due to the chaos they caused. A second later Shuzaki turned around, their eyes meeting for a second, and Izuku could feel the tug that was trying to get him over to Shuzaki. The green-haired dating sims protagonist was grateful that he had to remain seated, and no choices showed up in front of him. That was the first time dating sims had given him a warning about a route, which was new and certainly welcomed. What's the issue? Confusedly asked Izuku, the teen genuinely couldn't recall anything he had done that could have upset the girl. But before he had gotten one for all or dating sims he had been able to annoy people by breathing. So it wasn't as if Izuku couldn't annoy people, he could, quite easily as a meter of fact. No more sarcasm and we have a deal. Immediately decided Izuku, still miffed as to why Shizaki thought of him as a womanizing man slut. But then he remembered, a lot of his friends were girls, and that wouldn't be changed anytime soon it seemed. Are you Midoriya? Naisley asked someone. Currently Izuku was standing in line to receive his lunch, before going off to find Shuzaki. But for now, Izuku was looking around trying to find the source of the voice. Down here Sensei. Happily informed the person, before Izuku looked down, blinking in confusion as he saw a small teen, with purple balls for hair, before realizing the boy had called him Sensei. Sensei. Confusedly questioned Izuku, tilting his head to the side in confusion, but a small part of Izuku preened at being called Sensei. There was a certain ring to it, yet the short, purple-haired teen's eyes sparkled, clearly happy to know that Izuku was Midoriya. Please teach me how to charm women like you have. Loudly wailed the teen, getting down onto his knees and bowing in front of Izuku, earning the attention from everyone present, making Izuku go beat red. Since when did I have charm? Confusedly thought Izuku, his mind replaying everything that had happened to him since he had awakened dating sims, before emerald green eyes landed on the lone person giving him the thumbs up. Kaminari Denki. <laughs> Why? Immediately asked Izuku, the first choice was a big no, the second choice was a bit too dismissive for Izuku's liking, and the third option would at least allow Izuku to tell the guy no in a nicer way. Because you already have a harem already, and the first week hasn't even passed. Of course I want to learn from you, excitedly shouted the short, purple-haired teen, pulling something out from his pocket and showing it off to Izuku. It was a photo, more specifically it was a photo of Izuku in the middle of a group of girls, with Kayoka, Mina, and Yuraka on his left side, the former was leaning on it, looking at something Izuku was holding, while on his right was Itsuka, Momo, and Takage, the former also leaning on him and looking at something he was holding, which was blocked by the table. Izuku's eyes widened in realization, he remembered that exact moment, since he had shown off his workout schedule after Itsuka asked what it looked like. See, six girls and they're already looking at what you've got. Italy declared the short teen, Izuku couldn't help but sink in on himself, since if people started forming random, wild, and inaccurate opinions on him in the photo, Izuku would be labeled as a pervert. I was showing them my workout plan. 
defensively declared Izuku, snatching the photo from the teen's hands and stared at him, doing his best to channel his inner Bakugou Katsuki. Be quiet, and what is your name? Softly hissed Izuku, internally sweating bullets, since Izuku felt like he was being an ass to the teen. Maita Minoru, call me Minoru, at your service sensei. Proudly announced Minoru, bowing parallel to the floor, and everyone was staring at the odd duo at this point, then Izuku felt it. A tug, a heroine, who wasn't Shizaki was approaching him. They couldn't be cataloged if they ran away. Food, I'll miss you, but I don't want to be caught up in drama at the moment. Sadly thought Izuku, easily picking up Minoru with one arm, making Izuku question just how light Minoru was, before speed walking away. Where are we going sensei? A smoking hot upper third year is coming our way. Confusedly asked Minoru, drooling as he eyed the curly, blue-haired girl, whose eyes were gleaming in curiosity as she approached the duo. I need somewhere quite to teach you. Remorsefully mumbled Izuku, feeling Minoru tense up in his grip, and Izuku couldn't help but feel as if he had just signed his life away. There's an innuendo in there somewhere. Calmly deduced Izuku, currently focused on two things, his new title, and how to get away from the heroine, who was persistently chasing after him. Midoriya, calmly greeted the third person in 1A's classroom. Minoru was hiding beneath someone's table, about to observe Izuku quote-unquote use his charms on Shizaki, which was not planned in the slightest. It was either Shizaki or the energetic blue-haired girl. Calmly argued Izuku, feeling it in his gut that dating Sims was waiting for the right moment to give him the options, which would hopefully be good this time. Shizaki, I didn't expect you to be in here. Awkwardly mumbled Izuku, eyeing Shizaki, who didn't look pleased with what he had just said. I'm sorry, I was unaware I'm not allowed in the classroom. Sarcastically apologized Shizaki. The sad thing was that Izuku almost didn't know it was sarcasm. He only caught it at the last second, before time froze over completely. Options B and C are flirting, since she doesn't have a high opinion of me and thinks I'm a man slut those wouldn't work. Logically deduced Izuku, with what knew of Shizaki, which wasn't a lot, she appreciated honesty, which was something Izuku liked as well. D is it, calmly decided Izuku, realizing a shaky breath, as he could feel his body getting ready for what was about to happen. Then a tingle raced up Izuku's spine. Level 3 security breach. Loudly blared an alarm, making everyone's eyes widened in surprise. An ear-piercing ring echoed through the air, forcing Izuku, Minoru, and Shizaki to cover their ears with their hands, simultaneously winching from the pitch of the noise. As Izuku forced himself to shut his mouth so he couldn't speak option D gritting his teeth together, Izuku brought down both of his hands and shakily made his way to the classroom door, the other two occupants of the room following suit, before yanking it open. That's the security alarm, wearily stated Minoru, his heart pounding inside of his chest, as Izuku could feel the tingle going down his spine intensify, fully aware that something dangerous was coming their way. Someone broke in, helpfully clarified Minoru, as Izuku pursed his lips, realizing what the tingling sensation was now. Whoever had broken in was heading their way. One for all, five percent. Mentally chanted Izuku, spreading his quirk throughout his whole body, causing green sparks to leap from Izuku's skin, gaining the attention from both Shizaki and Minoru, both of whom were confused by the action. Whoever broke in is coming this way, shakily informed Izuku, bending his knees ever so slightly, ready to put the little bit of training Yuzujiyama had given him to use. What? Wordly shouted Minoru, hiding behind Izuku's legs and started trembling like a leaf, sweating bullets from the fact that someone, who had the talent to break into UA, was heading their way. We're gonna die. Pathetically wailed Minoru, Izuku could feel Shizaki looking at him, and Izuku slowly turned to look at Vine-haired girl, who was just giving him a flat look. Torajiri, it seems as if not every student has evacuated yet. Loudly growled someone, the tingle in Izuku's spine intensified ever further, as Shizaki's vines twitched, ready to react at a moment's notice, as the trio noticed two shadows around the corner. Minoru, what is your quirk? Hurriedly whispered Izuku, his mind running a mile a second, trying to come up with a plan that was full of assumptions and estimations, and frankly, Izuku didn't like those sorts of plans. I can take off my balls and throw them, they're really sticky as well. Nervously answered Minoru, forcing Izuku to look at his short friend, who was pointing at the purple balls on his head. Shizaki and Minoru have the potential to bind them, which is idea, since we've idea what the intruder's quirks are. Wearily decided Izuku, focusing on the corner as the pair of footsteps echoed throughout the hallway, before the intruders rounded the corner. Hey, these noobs are first years, they wouldn't be worth much. Eerily cackled the most normal-looking intruder, despite having obvious need for some skin moisturizer. The most defining traits about the intruder was his blue hair and red eyes. Do not be quick to judge them to Mira, they are in UA, meaning they're golden eggs. Softly chastised the person made of purple mist, that was Kurajiri if Izuku was to make a guess, and Izuku didn't know who to be more weary of. The man whose red eyes were clearly deranged, or the man whose body was made of mist, that could be poisonous. I don't care, get rid of them. Dismissively chuckled to Mira, Izuku could feel a tingle race down his spine the second those words left to Mira's mouth, forcing Izuku to bend down and scooping up Minoru with his right arm, before wrapping his left arm around Shizaki's waist. 
Hey, surprisedly yelped Shizaki as Izuku bent his knees and leapt backwards, and not a second too soon, since a misty, black hole opened up where they had been standing, and who knew what it would have done to them. Gating Sims, just focus on telling me where those misty holes come from. Hurriedly asked Izuku, his shoes squeaking loudly as they slid across the floor, forcing Izuku to lean forward in order to not lose his balance. Minoru, try and stick them both in place. Loudly heaved Izuku, his heart was pounding inside of his chest, it being from equal parts fear and excitement, since this was his first fight with a villain. But, 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 we could die. Pathetically wailed Minoru, even the villains paused for a second, their eyes meeting Izuku's own, and he could see the sympathy in them. Sadly Izuku knew Minoru quite well, despite barely knowing him for half an hour, but he knew how the guy worked. The first option wouldn't work, nor would the fourth or second option, meaning there was only one good choice. I'll put in a good word for you with my friends, softly mumbled Izuku, feeling Minoru tense up in his arm, before the short teen wiggled himself free, dropping to the ground and landing on his feet, an inferno of determination shining in his eyes. If you help, instantly added Izuku, since he did not want to be seen as a perv. Let's do this. I'll be the coolest hero ever. Giddily declared Minoru, his hands flying up to his head, as the teen started pulling off the purple balls from his head, and started clinging forward, before Izuku felt something touch his shoulder, just as a tingle raced up his spine. Do you mind letting me down? Calmly asked Shizaki, only for Izuku to spin on his heels and throw Shizaki up into the air, earning a yelp from the girl as Izuku leaned backwards, narrowly avoiding a hand coming from the misty portal that had been aimed at his face. Click. Seriously not the time. Eh? Loudly whined Tamira. Izuku put all of his might into his legs and leapt, doing a backflip that left much to be desired. As the green-haired teen held his arms, doing what his quirk said, as he saw multiple purple balls decorating the hallway, with Tamira's right foot on one. Kurajiri, it seems the green-haired brat has a maxed out perception stat, the purple-haired one is a trapper, and the girl. Slowly noted Tamira as he looked up, making everyone else do the same, as they spotted Shuzaki as she fell down, her vines spread throughout the hallway, forming a dome just about the two invaders, before she fell into Izuku's outstretched arms, and the dome fell around the two invade. Really, dryly mused Izuku, even when his heart was pounding after the quick fight, Izuku still had to deal with his quirk making him flirt with girls. But running high on adrenaline, Izuku wanted to pick something that should stop his route with Shizaki Ibarra from opening. Finally fallen for me, huskily asked Izuku, his face turning beet red from saying those words, as he watched Shizaki's face turn an equal shade of red, and Minoru went motionless as he stared at the duo. Sensei, I shall become someone like you one day. Emotionally whispered Minoru, unaware of the fact that Izuku had stopped working completely since that wasn't supposed to happen, but Izuku copped it, the distinct silence in the area. What? No. One villain had a warping quirk, surely he should have gotten both of them out by now, or the villain who tried touching him, his quirk was touched based, so it should have done something to Shizaki's vines. That should not be possible, relationships were supposed to increase so quickly. Problem child. What's happened here? Lively shouted Aizawa, making Izuku stiffen, forcing Shuzaki to throw her arms around Izuku's neck in order to support herself, a blush on both of their faces at the contact. Aizawa-sensei, two intruders tried attacking us. Izuku-sensei came up with a plan to contain them. Happily cheered Minoru, staring at Izuku with admiration and respect clear in his eyes, making Aizawa squint at Izuku and slowly raise a brow in confusion. They're in Shuzaki's hair prison. Cheerfully clarified Minoru, as Aizawa's jaw clenched every so slightly, before Izuku realized something, both Midnight and Present Mike were behind Aizawa. Shizaki, lower your containment dome. Izashi, take the kids somewhere else. Calmly spoke Aizawa, the tired and emotionally drained man was gone, and his place was a hero who knew what he had to do, as he glared at the collapsing dome. Everyone blinked as Shizaki's hair retracted, showing what was inside the dome, nothing. They are gone, slowly noted Izuku, his eyes widening in realization at the rookie mistake they had made, they had left a villain with a warp gate quirk unattended. Damn it, mentally yelled Izuku, first Shizaki, the same girl who thought of him as a man slut not even five minutes ago now had a crush on him, and the intruders escaped. Problem child, while I'm sure you like holding on to Shizaki, you might want to let her down. Amusedly pointed out Aizawa, earning a loud squeal from midnight at the sight of two teens in a rather intimate pose. Izuku dropped Shizaki out a mixture of reflex, embarrassment, and in the hopes that his relationship with Shizaki's relationship would go back down to being friends. It didn't. Smooth. Dryly applauded Aizawa, his eyes now fitting his appearance, tired, drained, and somewhat dead on the inside, and all Izuku could do was panic. Just like how Izuku could pull off a near-identical All Might smile, the green-haired dating sim's protagonist didn't take long to learn and master the dry, dead-eyed stare of Aizawa. At least tomorrow should be normal. Loudly yawned Izuku, physically, mentally, and emotionally drained after the day's event, intending on catching up on lost sleep, since he needed it. That's a wrap, people. As you can see, this chapter is pretty long. Izuku has started training with Mirko in the arts of kicking, which will truly come to light during the sports festival. 
On a side note, Shizaki is the first girl to start crushing on Izuku after four previous chapters, and I wonder who will be the next to fall for the green bean. Anyway, the Omic. One for all, a stockpiling quirk that could enhance one's body and quirk, but it did more than just stockpiling. Each time it was passed on, it took a bit of the previous user's consciences, which would eventually lead to Midoriya Izuku downfall. Dating Sims, a sentiment quirk that made Izuku's life into a dating game, would grin if it had a face, as it could feel something akin to unrivaled power coursing through it, boosting it even further, which in turn did something to Izuku. I don't like the fact you feel happy. Bluntly admitted Izuku, preparing himself to enter 1A's classroom, as he could feel the inferno that was one for all buzz inside of him, before his gut lurched. Charm, 999. Intelligence, 999. Aura, 999. Shaking his head in dismissal, Izuku knew his quirk was trying to mess with him. Both Izuku and dating sims knew that the former was more likely to combust into a ball of flames before he asked out a girl. A small glare planted itself onto Izuku's face as he opened up the door, freezing as he saw the occupants in the room frozen in place, their eyes wide in fright. Yuraka, are you okay? Worriedly asked Izuku as he watched Yuraka's face go through several shades of red within a few seconds, before the girl raised her hand to her forehead and fell forward into Izuku's hands. No, dating sims, you were kidding about my stats, right? Hopefully questioned Izuku, feeling his quirk churn about inside of him as if something new was happening. <laughs> what the hell? Why do I have skills now? Confusedly mumbled Izuku, staring at the rest of the class, even the girls who weren't heroines were looking at him now, and Izuku didn't know why, but he knew what those looks meant. Speech, hey what is up? Shouting, oh my god damn toe. Thinking, she looks pretty cute. Quirk notification. Izuku felt exhausted, scratch that. After doing 90 squats with each leg, Izuku was certain he qualified for some sort of break, since Yuzujiyama had been training him ragged since 4M. The green-haired teen did appreciate it. He knew it was for his dream, but there was an issue, dating sims, but to be more precise, Izuku hated the quest aspect of his quirk. Why do I have to do every quest I see? Mentally whined Izuku, currently stretching his legs out, having finished the muscles building aspect of their training, and moving on to the flexibility aspect of it. <laughs> Come on brat, I've better things to be doing. Exasperatedly huffed Yuzujiyama, currently doing what Izuku was supposed to be doing, a full splits, which Yuzujiyama pulled off with practiced ease due to years of training. Isn't there something more my level? Slowly asked Izuku. He enjoyed a challenge. Cleaning the beach was a challenge, but All Might had made a plan to ease him into it, helping him build up all of his muscles with time. I won't be able to walk after that. Bluntly noted Izuku, who was as flexible as a cracker, and he was fully aware of it. Realizing that Yuzujiyama and All Might were opposites, Yuzujiyama rushed things but knew what she was doing, while All Might took his times and did it flawlessly. There isn't anything less than the noob stage. Dryly yawned Yuzujiyama, doing her best to hide a grin as she watched Izuku blanch, fully aware that Izuku wasn't experienced enough to do this. But he wanted to show off his fighting style during the sports festival, and she would make sure it would happen. The kid has got the potential to be a decent fighter. The issue is getting his fighting instincts into the swing of it. Mentally noted Yuzujiyama, watching as Izuku slowly started spreading his legs apart, as the bunny girl got up and walked towards her student. His quirk was a pervert. Minoru was a pervert. Aizawa was emotional dead. The sad thing is, none of them are a lie. Disappointedly realized Izuku, stiffening as he felt someone's hands on his shoulders, slowly making Izuku turn around before stopping, seeing Yuzujiyama's sports bra in his face, making his brain process the situation at the speed of a baby crawling. What are you doing? Confusedly asked Izuku, feeling the sand beneath his feet shift ever so slightly, before Yuzujiyama's hands pushed down on his shoulders, making Izuku's eyes widen in realization. He was going to do the splits if he liked it or not. Yet Izuku couldn't help but smile as he felt himself do the full splits. Then the pain came, but Izuku still felt good about himself. That is it brat, you'll be doing this until you're flexible enough to kick as high as your head. Gleefully chuckled Yuzujiyama as Izuku could only whimper in both fear and pain, fully aware that it would slowly get easier as time went on, but Izuku thought he would never get used to it. You're a sadist, lowly mumbled Izuku before he was pushed down even further, making Izuku's lip tremble in agony that was Yuzujiyama's way of letting him know she heard him. Izuku didn't think there was anything better than having a warm shower and removing all of the sand that had clung to his body, making each moment uncomfortable, but it was worth it for the utter bliss he was experiencing right now. Groaning as he stepped out of the shower, Izuku slowly rotated his arms, working out the stiffness in them, as the green-haired dating sims protagonist started getting himself ready for UA, fully aware of what he had to do this morning. Have a shower, get himself ready for UA, start breakfast for himself, since his mother had to go to work early and was already there, clean up after breakfast, and leave for UA. Drying his damp hair, Izuku didn't bother trying to brush it, aware of the fact that his hair would look good regardless, which was a boon, since curly hair could be a nuisance. 
Just as Izuku finished tying his tie properly, the teen could feel his stomach rumble in hunger, making Izuku roll his eyes in annoyance. Fully aware of the fact he would have to cook himself breakfast, which he hadn't done in months, well before All Might's training regimen. Shaking his head at the thoughts, Izuku knew he had to do something simple. Rice would have to suffice until he got to UA early, and got himself something from the cafeteria. Fair point, mentally noted Izuku, which was totally reasonable from his quirk, since just owning the title would bolster his cooking skill in some degree, which Izuku knew would be useful in the future. Rice and fish it is, lowly mumbled Izuku, shaking his head from side to side one last time, before the green-haired teen walked out of the bathroom and made his way to the kitchen. That made Izuku freeze for a second as he gathered all of the ingredients he would need, which wouldn't take long to prepare, as Izuku let his mind wander back to the events of yesterday, and the problems that had sprouted up, mainly the fact that a girl had a crush on him, people infiltrating UA was another concern. A part of Izuku wanted to play the oblivious fool, just like many shonen anime protagonists, but unlike them, Izuku knew what his relationship was with each heroine, and couldn't play the fool because of it. A small part of Izuku was baffled, a girl had a crush on him. A girl had a crush on him. Another part of Izuku wanted to grin for joy at the thoughts of a girl having a crush on him, which made the preparations for breakfast even better. Then Izuku felt something shift ever so slightly inside of him, and Izuku knew dating sims was involved. Ones and zeros briefly flashed across Izuku's vision, originating from the food in front of him, making Izuku stare at the food he was about to cook, stiff as a board as the ones and zeros flew off of the food and into him. Information rushed to Izuku's head, forcing a hiss from Izuku's mouth, as information about the food in front of him came to his mind, the nutritional values and the ideal way of cooking it. What had just happened? <laughs> what? Loudly shouted Izuku, his face ghostly pale from the sudden influx of information, as the teen was trying to figure out what was happening in front of him. Dating Sims, what is happening? Softly asked Izuku, robotically placing all of the ingredients somewhere safe, as Izuku could feel a mental meltdown coming. It was oddly comforting for Izuku to know his quirk was as clueless as he was about the whole situation, which also meant neither of them knew what brought on the sudden manifestation of skills, or what skills he could learn. So dating Sims was unintentionally training him to be the number one house husband. At least there was something to fall back on if the hero lifestyle ever became too much for him. Izuku stared at his skill, one that was new and untrained, and a part of Izuku wanted to do something that everyone did when anyone got a skill in a video game, grind it until it maxed out. The green-haired teen wasn't a fool, he was fully aware that the skill would take months, possibly years to max out, but Izuku was going to do it one way or another. I'm going have to buy a few cookbooks then. That also means I'll have to wake up before my mother and cook breakfast for us. Excitedly thought Izuku, grinning at the thoughts of grinding a skill, which should level up somewhat quickly, since it was an incredibly low level, meaning Izuku should get it to level 4 in a few weeks of practice. Dating Sims was so helpfully. Izuku grimaced, the aftertaste of his breakfast lingered in his mouth, which was frankly the most horrible thing he had ever eaten, and Izuku regretted the fact he had brought his own, home-cooked lunch, which would taste as bad as his breakfast did. Moping as he walked into class, Izuku was feeling down on his luck, since he had a horrible lunch he couldn't throw away, his quirk had went back on its deal for not using sarcasm, and Bakugo was behind him. Move it, Deku. Lowly sneered Bakugo, a faint shiver racing up Izuku's spine, fully aware of the fact that Bakugo had no problem from attacking someone from behind, and that worried Izuku immensely. Izuku blinked at the screen that had popped up in front of him, making the green-haired dating sims protagonist step out of the way in response, as Bakugo continued walking forward and sneered at Izuku as he passed, before reaching for the door. Those words were something Izuku had never expected to be associated with Bakugo, who always acted like he was better than everyone, which was unfortunately somewhat true in most cases. Why? Confusedly asked Izuku, as emerald green eyes stared at the blonde-haired bully, while he yanked open the door and stomped inside, scowling at everyone else who was early. Bakugo Katsuki, the former friend turned bully was lonely, that unfortunately explained a lot to Izuku, since Bakugo had been more aggressive recently, meaning that was his way of covering up his loneliness. Time seemed to slow down as Bakugo took his first step into 1A, Izuku wanted to be a hero, that meant he had to save people, no matter what sort of issue it was, Izuku would save them. Okay, so I can potentially help Bakugo. Grimly realized Izuku, a petty part of him wanted Bakugo to walk by and experience what he felt for a decade of his life, but the last time Izuku tried helping Bakugo, his friend turned into his bully, that meant Izuku had to speak Bakugo's language. You're a bitch, you know that, calmly asked Izuku, releasing his breath that he had been holding in, as Bakugo froze up, registering the words Izuku had spoken, while Izuku was doing his best not to panic. Oh yeah. At least I've been putting in the effort for my dream since day one, and not relying on dumb luck. Lowly growled Bakugo, twisting on his heels so he could face Izuku, while partially being in the classroom, as Izuku's mind was trying to find a solution for the mess he was currently in. 
How about we make a bet? Stiffly spoke Izuku. He could feel the flames of one for all churn within him, as both of his quirks could sense what he was doing. And if Izuku wanted to succeed, he would have to break his limits many times over. Though, that's quite out of character of you. Dryly snorted Bakugo, rolling his eyes in amusement at Izuku's antics. Yet a part of him was curious about where Izuku was going with this. I'll do the favor and hear you out. Quietly hissed Bakugo, staring down Izuku as the classroom went silent. No doubt whoever was in there could hear them talking. The sports festival, the third stage is always a one-on-one -on -one fight, sometimes a two-on-two. -two. We both make it to the third stage and fight. If I win, you have to be my friend. Slowly informed Izuku, chewing on the inside of his cheek as he saw Bakugo actually humor the idea, no doubt thinking he would win, and there was that possibility. Now, what do you want if you win? Professionally inquired Izuku, almost gulping as Bakugo's eyes lit up in glee at an idea, which worried Izuku immensely. When I win, you have to drop out of UA and give up your dream of being a hero. Condescendingly stated Bakugo, extending his right hand out for Izuku to shake it, and with that, Izuku made his deal with the explosive gremlin. Deal, simply accepted Izuku, shaking Bakugo's hand, his mind racing a mile a second, trying to come up with counters and strategies for Bakugo, who would be an incredibly though opponent. With that, Bakugo turned around and walked away from Izuku, leaving the door open for Izuku, which was actually a somewhat kind gesture from the blonde, who apparently respected Izuku a little bit more than he once had. Now all Izuku had to do was win a fight against Bakugo, who had been training for years to be a hero, it sounded simple enough. <laughs> Bro, that was so manly, excitedly cheered Ijiro, grinning as Izuku stepped through the door, as Izuku took a brief look at who was present in the class. There was Bakugo, Ijiro, surprisingly Takage, Tenya, Momo, Todoroki, Takoyami, Kodai, and Shuzaki, but what truly caught Izuku's attention was what was on his desk, a bento box. A tear gathered in Izuku's left eye. Finally, there was an excuse not to eat his horrible lunch that may or may not accidentally poison the person who ate it. That was on your desk when I arrive, which was baffling since I was the first one here. Helpfully clarified Tenya, who had his lips pursed as Izuku walked by, having heard the deal his friend had made with Bakugo, which left Izuku in a fairly tight spot. In terms of raw power, Izuku has more than Bakugo, but Izuku can't use all of it safely, only a meager 5%, which certainly helps him, but doesn't put him on the level Bakugo is. Logically noted Tenya, watching with a slight smile growing on his face, as Izuku looks so happy at the bento box on his desk. Whoever made this, thank you. Emotionally huffed Izuku, his eyes watering at the fact he didn't have to eat his horrible lunch, while the green-haired teen sat at his desk, staring at the bento box in wonder. You're truly a gift to humanity, softly mumbled Izuku, he wasn't sure if anyone could hear him at all, but he didn't care, Izuku had suffered too much this morning already. Maybe a girl having a crush on him wasn't so bad after all. Problem child, go to the support department. Your outfit has been dubbed unsafe for work, since it's made of latex and doesn't offer the minimum amount of protection. Riley ordered Aizawa, making everyone perk up, trying to find the teacher, before the man in question poked his head up from beneath the teacher's desk, looking as tired as ever. Izuku couldn't get the grin off of his face as he stood up, fully aware that this would take a while to sort out, but things were finally going his was today, which was appropriated, since Izuku's legs were killing him, his food sucked, and there is a possibility he had to leave UA if he lost to Bakugo, but he got a bento box. It was balanced, as all things should be. The door exploded off its hinges. A shiver raced down Izuku's spine as he felt a warm breeze hit his face. A heroine, who he had met was approaching him, was worried Izuku ever so slightly was the vast amounts of smoke and fire flying out of the support department. Izuku's mind was racing as he tired figuring out what was happening, before something slammed into him, knowing Izuku onto his back. A moment before a particular large cloud of smoke could hit him in the face, as the teen's ears rang from the explosion. What just happened? Confusedly thought Izuku, trying to process how a simple walk to the support department had turned into his narrowly avoiding being swatted into a wall by a door, which was confusing, but laying on the floor of UA was surprisingly comfortable. Slowly blinking as he read the text message in front of him, Izuku hesitantly looked down, realizing that dating Sims was correct. He was not laying on the floor of UA, but instead he was draped across someone, more specifically one pink-haired heroine who had a thing for machines. Luckily Izuku wasn't in the cliché where they were kissing or where the male accidentally groped the girl, but it was still awkward since it looked as if Izuku had pinned her to the floor. Why didn't you alert me of the danger? Mentally screeched Izuku, his mind coming to a complete halt as Hatsum stared into his eyes, both of them trying to process what just happened. My costume doesn't have the minimum amount of protection, so it needs an upgrade. Stiffly informed Izuku, leaping off of Hatsum with as much grace as a socially awkward 15-year-old boy could muster, which wasn't a lot in anyone's opinion. You okay? Concernedly asked Izuku, staring at Hatsum who was now grinning like a fool, which worried Izuku a lot more than the explosion had. What are we waiting for? We got a baby to make. Excitedly screeched Hatsum, getting off the ground with a fire in her eyes, as she got to her feet and dragged Izuku onto the smoking remains of the support that. 
Babius confusedly shouted Izuku, his mind still a mess from what had happened, and Hatsune wasn't someone who really put much thought into anything else that wasn't a machine, so it wasn't surprising she had a few odd habits. H-A-T-S-U-M-A furiously howled someone else inside the support department, making Izuku blanch as Hatsume threw herself at a computer that hadn't been destroyed in the explosion, while Izuku awkwardly looked at the other person in the room. Power loader, Akamejima Higari, the man who looked as equally pissed as he was accepting of what had just happened, while he stared at Izuku as Hatsume was happily typing on the computer, no doubt bringing his outfit's information up. What Izuku assumed to be the source of the explosion sparked up, making Izuku nervously step away from the potentially dangerous scraps of metal that looked vaguely like a match suit. Hatsum, I is so close to throwing you out of UA, loudly grumbled Power Loader, holding two of his fingers so close together Izuku was sure they were touching, but who was he to judge a student's, teacher's odd friendship? Yeah, yeah, now I'm busy thinking of what my newest baby for Izuku will look like. Leafly cackled Hatsum, easily dismissing her teacher without a second thought, with took a lot of courage, or she simply didn't care how she treated the man. Don't be mean dating sims, annoyedly thought Izuku, watching Hatsum bring up various blueprints that were stored on the computer, and Izuku even caught some of the older designs from noticeable heroes, who had went to UA. Can I keep the same design? Curiously asked Izuku, who admittedly had very little understanding in heroes' outfits, though knew when the outfit benefited the hero's quirk in some way. As long as it isn't horrible, slowly answered Hatsum, trailing off as she did so before she hissed loudly, surprising Izuku by pulling up his records from the quirk apprehension test. His outfit design, in a brief description of one for all, which had been dubbed as superpower on public records. Okay, so you can't handle your full power yet, so broken bones are most certainly a thing. That means the outfit has to be incredibly durable, flexible, as well as having extra padding on the fists, elbows, shoulders, knees, as well as the head. How do you fight? Punching or kicking? inquisitively mumbled Hatsum, who was going on to a mumbling rant, which Izuku could understand perfectly. Kicking mainly, but I will still be using punches. If I need additional protection, I feel like my mask and bracer should be upgraded, and having my outfit made out of a tougher material. Rapidly answered Izuku, looking at Hatsum who looked up at Izuku, before grinning at the fact he was voicing his own thoughts. That is doable, but how do you feel about support equipment? Since your quirk is merely an enhancement quirk, you might need additional equipment on the field in case of an emergency, like a burn wound, or you break your arm. Hurriedly questioned Hatsum, who was salivating at the thoughts of what Izuku could carry with him into a fight, within reason of course, but someone who had as much strength as Izuku did, he could carry a lot in. I'd need a place for emergency first aid at least, but what if? You can find a support item that can let me harness the air displacement my quirk causes. Interestedly realized Izuku, chewing on his lower lip as he realized that one day he would have more raw strength than All Might, and All Might was known for changing the weather with a single punch, which meant Izuku could do the same one day. Dating Sims, how much of one for all has to be used for air displacement? Mentally questioned Izuku, the green-haired teen was certain he could do the maths to figure it out, but that meant figuring out how much force he had behind his punch, and that meant he had to use all of one for all, meaning he'd break an arm. Izuku slowly titled his head, since this was as close as thing dating Sims had come to a freakout. So what do you think? Nervously asked Hatsum, unaware that Izuku was internally panicking again, since he had completely forgotten that he had been in a conversation with Hatsum, meaning he had zoned out for the entire thing. Do you really think I'd choose option D? Confusedly snorted Izuku, looking into Hatsum's eyes, which were sparkling with equal amounts of hope and worry as Izuku's mind fluttered through the possible options, trying to come up with a vague idea of what Hatsum could have told him. They weren't friends, dating sims confirmed that for sure, but they both had one thing in common, which let Izuku know that he could trust her in this, since he wanted to be a hero, and she wanted to create support gear for heroes, meaning they both wanted to protect people. Besides, Power Loader would do something if it was too crazy, right? It sounds wonderful. Uncertainly agreed Izuku, doing his best to mask his worry at what he was agreeing to, but a part of him knew that Hatsum would pull through for him. W-O-O-O-W, my first test subject excitedly hollered Hatsum, which immediately got rid of any of Izuku's hope in an instant. Sorry, I just remembered something. Blatantly lied Hatsum, and that didn't do much to soothe Izuku's nerves, which were now close to being shot, despite it being so early in the day. Was it bad that Izuku regretted what he had just agreed to? All of my routes are so far pretty low, which is good. Except for Shizaki, who has a crush on me, but everyone else is still either in the low end of stage 2 or middle to high end of the stage 1, which isn't soothing at all. Worriedly noted Izuku, still as still as a statue in the classroom, vaguely aware of the fact that Aizawa was out of his sleeping bag for once and was talking in his normal cheerful and energetic voice. The issue is avoiding the titles of our current relationship, as well as earning titles myself, since those can actually boost the relationship point I can get from a girl. Wearily recalled Izuku, since by that standard, Mina was the most likely to be the next person to fall for him if he wasn't careful. 
dancing buddies, and manly bro, the former would just give him relationship points with one Ashido Mina every time he practiced dancing with her, which was something he desperately had to do if he wanted to have a chance in developing the basics of his fighting style before the sports festival, and manly bro simply doubled the amount of relationship he would get with Ashido. With as much stealth as he could muster, Izuku slowly looked over to Ashido, who immediately met his gaze and winked at him, forcing the green-haired dating sim's protagonist to look away. There was still three weeks before the sports festival. If I did go dancing every day from now on with Ashido, that would mean I'd gain a minimum of 10 relationship points with Mina a day. Possibly more. Logically worked out Izuku, wanting to slam his head against the table as he realized that Ashido would definitely have a crush on him before the sports festival, and at least a third of the way through stage 3 as well. Problem child, catch. Loudly barked Aizawa, something slamming into Izuku's head a split second later, earning a hiss of pain from Izuku as the teen heard something hit his desk, making Izuku look down at his desk, before looking up at his teacher in bewilderment. Did Aizawa actually throw his briefcase at him? Now, any questions? No? Good. Abruptly asked Aizawa, staring Tenya in the eyes as the teen's hand was clearly in the air, wanting to ask a question that certainly wouldn't be answered by the emotionally tired teacher. How is he a qualified teacher? Simultaneously thought everyone in 1A, since their homeroom teacher had just thrown a briefcase at Izuku, then ignoring Tenya's question, while they all watched the man crawl into his sleeping bag. Am I the only one who wishes we had another teacher? Wearily questioned Kaminari, who had more than a handful of people nodding along in agreement, while Izuku looked down at the briefcase, trying to figure out what was happening. I really wished I had my priorities straight, mentally mumbled Izuku, though a part of him was looking at the bigger picture, Aka trying to avoid a real-life love drama that would be centered around him, and Izuku had a feeling all of Japan would one day know about his issue if he wasn't careful. One by one everyone stood up and started walking toward the wall in order to pick up their own briefcase, in order to pick up their hero outfit or the sports uniform, as Izuku clutched his own briefcase and followed Tenya. It was a tad odd, following Tenya and Momo, both of them were at the front of the group of students, leading them towards the locker rooms. This could be madness, abruptly stated someone besides Izuku, making the team blanch at the fact he didn't recognize whose voice it was, forcing Izuku to look towards his right, seeing his bird-headed classmate. Takoyami Fumikich, who hadn't spoken to him beforehand. <laughs> okay, the last option is out since I know his name is Takoyami, and considering he gives off edgelord vibes, I think the first option would be the best, if I wanted to be friends with him. Logically assessed Izuku, going over Takoyami's words, as everyone started falling into two groups, the guys and the girls, as they approached their specific locker room. Madness is in the eyes of the beholder. Calmly selected Izuku, seeing Takoyami's eyes widen ever so slightly at Izuku's response, and all Izuku could do was just hope that he had chosen the right one. You have a unique perspective Midoriya, I hope the madness does not reach you. Happily hummed Takoyami, unaware that Izuku was more likely to be driven insane from his dating sim's predicament than any other madness-inducing event. Izuku watched as Takoyami walked over to his normal spot in the locker room as Izuku was trying to process what had just happened. Before shrugging his shoulders, it was probably Takoyami's way of asking if he was okay or something like that. Walking over towards the bench Izuku had practically claimed, Izuku could feel Bakugo's eyes on him as well as Todoroki's, fully aware that the former was watching him because of the deal they had made, while the latter's reason was unknown to Izuku. <laughs> Yo dude, lazily greeted Kaminari, already in his hero outfit, and was happily lazing about in the locker room, no doubt waiting for Kirishima to finish getting changed. You sure it's smart to challenge Bakugo like that? Not doubting your abilities or that, but I'm fairly certain he wouldn't have an issue on keeping the deal if you win. Idly hummed Kaminari, Izuku could see the point, that Hugo did give off the vibes of being the sort of person who'd steal candy from a baby, but Izuku knew that wasn't the case. Hopefully at least. <laughs> D. Wearily confirmed Izuku, the green-haired dating sim's protagonist didn't like any of the options presented to him. The first was too arrogant for his liking, the second option made it seem as if he didn't have any confidence in himself, and the third option was a lie. Did you know fir trees can grow in a person's lungs? Curiously asked Izuku, regretting his choice immensely. There wasn't even any words to describe Izuku's current mood as he stared dead-eyed into Kaminari's. Okay, though I know now who not to go to in a stressful situation. Contently hummed Kaminari, offering Izuku a smile before walking off, oddly stiff as he did so. What was that? The wilderedly shouted Izuku, glaring down at his sports uniform, removing his clothes as he did so, waiting for Dating Sims to give its answer. The fact that Dating Sims had no control over it at all made Izuku even more annoyed. Ah, so if I go to friend's house, I take off my shoes and thank them. Shakily spoke Tsunotori in Japanese, making Izuku nod in glee, currently keeping his promise with Tsunotori to teach her some more Japanese words as well as some traditions. Can I try that at your place? Sweetly asked Tsunotori, giving Izuku her best puppy dog eyes, as the teen was trying to make the best of a poor situation. 
Currently, Izuku was at the back of a bus, Tsunotori was on his left in her hero outfit, with Yanagi Ryaiko sitting on his right, slowly dozing off and occasionally letting her head bump off his right shoulder, only to jolt awake a second later. The current issue was the fact that Shizaki was sitting just in front of them on the left, beside Komori, who was one of the few girls in the class who didn't view him as a potential boyfriend, as her fellow plant-based quirk user was staring disapprovingly at Izuku. Have you heard this expression before? A fir tree is more likely to grow in Endeavor's lungs than for me to do something about Shizaki's crush on me. Saltily asked Izuku, who would be more than content to let Shizaki go after someone else, especially Ijiro, who'd be a good choice. I'll have to ask my mom, but I think it would be okay. Slowly responded Izuku, trying to get used to having two separate conversations going on at once, which was very disorienting. Hey, this is my first time going to a friend's house here. Happily cheered Tsunotori, her loud cheering actually managed to wake up Yanagi, and Aizawa surprisingly looked up from his seat, and nobody was surprised that the teacher had been trying to sleep again. <laughs> Didn't you break your promise not to use sarcasm? Why should I be fair? Dryly asked Izuku, pursing his lips together, trying to deal with an excitable student, who wanted to learn about Japan, as well as a childish quirk, that knew more about relationships than Izuku himself did. Now that I think about it, would my mom be okay if I brought more friends over? Curiously mused Izuku, who knew that his mother would take a shining to Ijiro immediately, as well as Ochako if she was available. Interesting. But was it worth the risk? For all Izuku knew, dating sims had found out something else about One for All, like a hidden quirk buried beneath the inferno of flames that made up One for All. It could have been a quirk so dark and malicious that the previous users were actively forcing it down, so it wouldn't see the light of day again. On the other hand, it could be something utterly worthless, like giving him different skins to wear, like an RPG character. It's a gamble, but if I do lose, the consequence isn't that bad. Wearily debated Izuku, pursing his lips as he looked over at his fellow green-haired classmate, fully aware of the fact that their eyes were locked for a solid ten seconds. Ijiro, Tenya, Achako, Momo, and Shizaki, do you guys want to come to my place tomorrow? Curiously questioned Izuku, a blush crawling up his neck as everyone looked at him, fully aware of the fact that he looked so awkward doing so. Hell yeah, I'm down bro. Happily cheered Ijiro, a small smile on everyone's face as they looked at the enthusiastic redhead, who was smiling from ear to ear in glee. If your parents are okay with the agreement mid. Izuku, slowly accepted Tenya, while sending Izuku a nod of approval, clearly pleased with the invite over to a friend's house. Sorry Midoriya, I've something organized that day. Apologetically sighed Momo, who genuinely seemed sad at the fact she couldn't go over to Izuku's, but the green-haired teen understood it. There was also the sports festival to consider. Really? That'd be great. Excitedly agreed Achako, as Izuku turned his attention to the last person who he had asked, who was now randomly twitching, which was rather worrisome. Now, what is it? Curiously questioned Izuku, tuning out the world around him, in favor of waiting for his quirk to respond to him, which was taking an annoyingly long time. Additional functions. It makes sense, Dating Sims is based off of a Dating Sims RPG, and after doing a lot of research on Dating Sims, I know that some Dating Simulators do have item shops that can increase relationship with a heroine. Then by that logic, I could potentially have an inventory system at well, but Dating Sims affects my body, so I don't think it's possible for Dating Sims to be able to open a hole in space and store objects. Logically broke apart Izuku, doing his best not to mumble, idly adjusting his gloves, which he had been allowed to wear at least, trying his best to think of any additional functions Dating Sims could possibly have. That wasn't ever including the DLCS Dating Sims could get from the other quirks inside of him. Why did a sentient, sarcastic quirk have to be so complicated? What do you think of that broderia? Interestedly shouted Ijiro, making Izuku slowly blink, realizing he had been ignoring everyone at this point, vaguely aware of the fact that Yanagi was asleep on his shoulder as the green-haired teen stared at his red-headed friend in confusion. Ha, huh, the similarities between your quirk and All Might's. Rhetorically sighed Ijiro, causing everyone to look at the green-haired dating sim's protagonist as he almost froze up. Fully aware that now everyone was focused on Izuku, since they all knew Izuku's quirk was incredibly similar to All Might's quirk. Why are there so many quick time events? Confusedly mulled Izuku, realizing that a few days ago, quick time events were somewhat less common. But today alone Izuku had experienced five of them alone, which was a lot more than normal. If it makes you feel better, my quirk is so strong it destroys my body, All Might doesn't have that issue. Dryly responded Izuku, feeling Bakugo's eyes on him. He knew that Izuku's quirk had literally come out of nowhere. Nobody in the Midoriya family had a strength enhancement quirk. That was the downside of being so talkative about his family history on what quirks they all had. So you're saying your quirk is stronger than All Might's? Lowly growled Bakugo, locking eyes with Izuku as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist stared at his antagonist. And in that moment, nothing else truly mattered for either teen, except for winning their deal. Yes, it is, and it'll get stronger. Slowly answered Izuku, he could hear the cracklings of explosions from Bakugo's hands, as Izuku couldn't help but let a little bit of one-for-all course through him, fully aware of the small crackle of sparks escaping from his skin. 
only for the moment to be ruined when the bus came to a screeching halt and neither of the two teens were prepared for being flung forward. Fuck, loudly shouted Bakugo, sliding out of his seat and onto the floor since he hadn't been wearing his seatbelt, while Izuku luckily dug his feet into the ground, managing to push himself back into his seat before he could fall onto the floor like a fool. They confusedly mumbled one of Izuku's classmates, as Izuku felt something plop onto his lap, freezing as if Todoroki had caught him in his ice, before slowly looking down. Yanagi Ryaiko, someone who Izuku was only acquainted with, was laying on his lap, currently looking up at him, with confusion clear in her eyes, as well as a bit of pride, which was really confusing. Your thighs make for a nice lap pillow, calmly stated Yanagi, not at all embarrassed from saying something like that aloud, but it did make Izuku's heart swell a little bit, since he had been working on his legs recently. It was nice for someone to appreciate the fact, other than himself. Everyone, get off, tiredly ordered Aizawa, rolling his eyes in sheer exasperation as he watched his students slowly shuffle get off the bus, fully aware of the fact that Izuku was going through an array of issues, both girl and Bakugo-based issues. It was awkward for Izuku to get up, fully aware that he had caused a scene on the bus, and couldn't help but shiver in both fear and nervousness, making the teen's whole body vibrate, only for something to click in the back of Izuku's mind a second later. Never in his life had he been so nervous, not when he faced off against the slime villain, Bakugo, the intruders, or even Shuzaki, and Izuku couldn't help but draw a horrible conclusion. He wasn't nervous, Danger Sense was telling him something horrible was about to happen. Aizawa, loudly shouted Izuku, looking at Aizawa with pure terror in his eyes, as every other student had made their way over to the other teacher that was there. 13. Izuku subconsciously realized, as Aizawa whipped around, staring at Izuku with concern. Izuku was vividly aware of the terror coursing through his body, as he couldn't help but sprint to the group, zooming past every other student. Before skidding to a halt in front of everyone, Aizawa following suit a second later, capture scarves waving in the air. Everyone else was confused, weirded out and mildly scared of the bizarre behavior from their homeroom teacher and green bean classmate, then the lights flickered. Emerald green eyes focused on the center of the USJ, watching as a misty black portal, the same as misty intruders, appeared just in front of the fountain. And Izuku could feel the danger radiating from the other zones in the USJ, meaning the trip had gotten a whole lot more dangerous. Everyone was frozen as they watched people, villains and thugs, stream out of the portals, until the same people who had intruded into UA appeared, and then the last villain appeared. Danger sense went wild, calling it a person, even with mutation quirks around, was a stretch, since Izuku knew that something was horribly wrong with that thing, the way it moved nearly robotically, not even a trace of free will or intelligence in its eyes. With danger sense, Izuku found himself lucky enough to pinpoint every large clump of danger, and there was easily a dozen of them in the plaza alone. Dating sims, what are we going to do? Hoarsely questioned Izuku, Aizawa's hand clamped onto the teen's shoulder, trying to push him backwards, away from the danger, only for the green-haired dating sim's protagonist to be rooted to the ground, due to his enhanced strength. Problem child, stay with 13. Kaminari, contact the school. 13. Protect the students. Calmly ordered Aizawa, slowly placing his goggles onto his face as his hair started rising up, fully aware of the fact that the blue-haired ringleader was talking, but he was too far away to hear it. Before the hero flung himself down to the horde of villains, not an ounce of fear or hesitation in his movements, the tiredness had faded, and what was left was a man who could beat anyone he set his mind to. Whatever dating Sims was doing, it better be quick. Izuku, what's going on? Confusedly asked Achako, a tingle racing down Izuku's spine, slowly making Izuku turn around to face his classmates, gazing slightly above them as a portal formed above them. <laughs> villains have invaded the USJ. Gently answered Izuku, mustering all of his will as he closed his eyes. Danger sense letting Izuku know that the mist villain was now blocking the entrance, keeping everyone trapped inside, and then Izuku used with everything he had. I am going to save everyone, determinedly promised Izuku, his eyes burning with power as 5% of one for all flooded his body, and something inside Izuku shifted, has made itself no to the world. Greetings, I am Kurajiri, from the League of Villains. Strange, All Might was supposed to be here, was he not? Confusedly asked Kirajiri, before his whole misty body froze for just a second, not enough to do anything at all, but it was noticeable for those who paid enough attention. Huh, I guess I shall deposit you all into a zone, and let the thugs pick you off. Idly hummed Kirajiri, his yellow eyes glowing with a twisted light in them, as his body started expanding again, getting ready to transport everyone here. Students, get behind me. Commandingly barked 13, in her astronaut suit, as Izuku stared at the huge, misty form Kurajiri had taken, fully aware that his body should be somewhere in there, as 13 raised up her hands, and the small cups at the end of her fingers clicked upwards. The metal bracer, vividly recalled Izuku, activating again, staring Kurajiri in his eyes, as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist's mind was running through various thoughts like a fool, trying to identify where the bracer could be, before realizing that he wouldn't have enough time. Back you go, there's a metal bracer in there. 
That's his weak point, loudly shouted Izuku, fully aware that Kirajiri had only frozen for a second, but that was enough time for Izuku to lift up his own right hand and place his ring finger against his thumb. One for all, one hundred. Don't tell me what to do. The AKU furiously howled Bakugo as an explosion launched the teen forward, just a moment before Izuku flicked his fingers with all of his might. It was as if a tornado had formed indoors as a stream of air rushed forward, easily making all of the students behind Izuku lose their balance from the sheer air displacement from the attack, before it slammed into Kirajiri, knocking the villain off balance, and Izuku used that moment to use again while it felt like his hand was on fire. Bakugo was surprisingly cooperative, launching himself until he was in front of the villain, obviously realizing that this was a lot more serious than he had originally thought. If Izuku was willing to break a few of his own bones, while the blonde-haired gremlin brought up his two hands, and let them explode with as much heat and smoke as possible. Truly I am impressed with you too, especially you Izuku, remembering my weak point from our encounter. Coldly chuckled Kirajiri, who didn't waste a second in vanquishing the smoke with one of his portals, showing off to everyone that he wasn't harmed at all, and he only seemed upset from the attempt. You're both golden eggs, a shame neither of you all will survive to see your potential. Softly sighed Kirajiri, who almost seemed somewhat regretful for what he was about to do, before a shudder raced up Izuku's spine, telling him something dangerous was nearby. Danger Sense was telling Izuku that it was completely surrounding him. Izuku didn't waste a second, he looked at the person who was closest to him, and grabbed onto her. That's a wrap people. Yes, Izuku will start developing some skills, there will be no combat skills luckily, the most offensive skill Izuku will actually have is intent, which isn't really a skill, since Stain was able to use bloodlust in the Hasu City arc, and All Might and All for One have a presence to them, so it is more so something like that. There won't be that many skills anyway, most of the skills will relate to Izuku being a house husband anyway, and Izuku will mainly get his skills through doing various tasks. An example the washing up, or getting a skill every time his stats reach a multiple of 50, with the lone exception of when danger sense is completely assimilated. Everyone, the problem child has been in an accident. Emotionlessly sighed Aizawa, gazing over the class, fully aware that some were more effect than others, specifically Shuzaki, Yuraka, Yairazu, Kendo, Aida, and Aijiro. I say everyone will get a chuckle out of this. Dryly realized Aizawa, loudly clearing his throat, making the class go silent, as the door slowly opened up, revealing. Midoriya, I want to leave. Immediately concluded Izuku, as she walked into the classroom, feeling everyone's gaze on her, as she was fully aware of the fact that she was not ready for this, she did not want to be a girl. Midoriya got involved in a villain attack this morning. The villain's quirk temporarily turned someone into the opposite gender, so the problem child will be a girl for a week. Amusedly hummed Aizawa, looking over his students, some were almost laughing, Akabekugo and Kaminari, some didn't seem phased, Takoyami and Takage, most were shocked, but Shizaki was blushing. Izuku couldn't do much but whimper, as she slowly looked towards her teacher, who knew by her look, that something had happened with dating sims, more specifically one of his routes. Forgive me lord, softly mumbled Shizaki, staring at Izuku with only two emotions in her eyes, and Izuku wasn't sure how to feel about it. Love and lust, speech, hey what is up, shouting, oh my god damn toe. Thinking, she looks pretty cute. Quirk notification. Izuku hit the ground with a thud, barely angling the person who he was holding upwards, managing to prevent them from hitting the ground with the help of 5% of one for all, before a second thumping sound echoed the area. The second Izuku was able to look up, he realized there was a lot of rocks around him, as well as the area being rather sloped, which meant the only logical conclusion was that he, along with the two other people he was with, were in the landslide zone. At least he knew who he was with now. Oh, loudly hissed Izuku, silently sighing in relief as Yanagi stood up on her own. Not that she was heavy, but Izuku couldn't hold that awkward position for long, plus it was rude to insinuate a girl was heavy. Who else is here? Stiffly asked Izuku, slamming both of his hands into the ground, forcefully launching himself into the air, before landing on his feet and surveying the area. Without wasting a single second, Izuku whipped around, catching a glance of the two people who were with him, Yanagi Ryaiko and Kendo Itsuka, as he clumsily threw his right fist forward, winching every so slightly as something smacked against his hand, followed by a cracking sound. Luckily it wasn't his bones this time, instead, from what Izuku saw of the shards flying past him, they were yellow. Hey, how did he know that? Confusedly gawked the attacker, who didn't look much older than Izuku himself, which made Izuku hesitate for just a split second, as he could see the horde of thugs in front of him, easily seeing thirty of them. There's ten for each of us. Wearily realized Izuku, chewing on his lower lip, looking back at Itsuka and Yanagi, desperately trying to come up with a plan, since Izuku knew that they would be screwed without one. Wait, will this work? Hopefully noted Izuku, staring at the horde of thugs in front of him, before activating, knowing that the skill made his willpower tangible, which could knock out people with a weaker will than him. Izuku, what do we do? Stiffly questioned Itsuka, getting up and walking over to Izuku, her hands rapidly growing as she did so, as some of the thugs in front of the duo started wavering on their feet, obviously feeling the effects of Izuku's willpower. Yanagi, how good are you at manipulating soil? 
furiously asked Izuku, a semblance of a plan forming in his head, as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist was trying to come up with a plan that had the maximum guarantee for safety. Equal to my ability to manipulate sand. Easily answered Yanagi as a soft, pink hue started engulfing the soil in her immediate area, recognizing what Izuku was planning. One of the thugs charged forward, his head was that of a bull's, as well as his feet, which were hooves, as the man tilted his head forward, hoping to ram either Izuku or Itsuka through with his horns, not allowing the plan to be discussed any further. Not wasting a second of time, Izuku threw himself at the bull man, green eyes hardening as Izuku thrusted both of his hands out, rooting himself in place in front of the bull man, and grabbed onto the bull man's horns. It was barely noticeable, but Izuku slid back just an inch, and the teen knew he was slowly sliding backwards. His shoes weren't meant for this sort of situation, but there was one thing Izuku could do. Glaring into the bull man's amber eyes, Izuku activated again, focusing solely on the bull man, while slowly turning up challenging more and more of one for all. One for all, six percent. With Izuku busy grabbing the bull man, Yanagi passively stared forward. More and more soil started coiling upwards, quickly making Yanagi reach her weight limit, but she had enough to work with keeping half of the soil curling around her for defensive purposes, as the other half rushed forward, slamming and twisting around the nearest and most unfortunate thug, who was immediately used as a battering ram against the next, unfortunate soul. Who the hell says yeet? What even is that? Confusedly mulled Izuku, having never seen nor heard of the word before, meaning that it probably came from a time long ago in the past, well before he was even born, but the green-haired teen did know what option B most likely did. Itsuka, you ever play baseball? Curiously asked Izuku, his legs tensing in preparation, as he was slowly pushing the bull man backwards, not being able to handle 6% of one for all. Izuku I'm kinda busy here, loudly shouted Itsuka, ducking beneath a stinger that had been aimed at her head, taking a step forward immediately and thrusted her right palm upwards, enlarging her right palm at the last second, in order to maximize the force and speed of her blow. Emerald green eyes narrowed in concentration, trying to desperately come up with a way to get every one of his classmates out of this situation, which honestly wasn't looking good, since Izuku was very certain all of them had been transported by Kurajiri, meaning nobody was about to alert the teachers anytime soon. Something clamped down on Izuku's shoulders, breaking the teen from his concentration, which made Izuku slowly stare at the bull man, whose hands were now firmly clamped down upon Izuku's shoulders, squeezing them in order to remove the ability to use his arms. Desperate for a way to break free from the bull man, Izuku bent his knees forward and pushed off the ground, leaning as far backwards as he possibly could, barely making the bull man's arms straighten ever so slightly, before rushing forward with everything he had. A sickening creak made its way to Izuku's ears, as Izuku managed to duck beneath the bull man's left arm, breaking free from his grip. It twisted on his left heel, slamming his right foot into the back of bull man's knee, driving the hulking villain to the ground. That was one down, and there were dozens more. ITSUKA fall back to Yanagi, loudly shouted Izuku, staring at a villain who decided to rush him, most likely having some sort of enhancement quirk, only to freeze in place as Izuku rushed forward, activating causing the woman to freeze, allowing Izuku to deliver an uppercut to her jaw, knocking her out in an instant. Yanagi will be our MVP here, she'll be taking down the majority of the thugs here, while myself and Itsuka have to either create more ammunition for her to use, or to take out anyone who makes it through. Realistically concluded Izuku, he knew he was nowhere near All Might's level of strength, it would possibly be years before that happened, but there was one thing Izuku knew he had over All Might, his analytical mind. So what's the plan? Wearily huffed Itsuka, carefully jogging backwards, keeping an eye on the line of villains, who were equally weary of the group of teens that were a lot harder to take down than they had thought they would have been. For now, we have to protect Yanagi while she takes down the villains with her ability to manipulate soil and dust to overwhelm them, while we protect her. Hurriedly explained Izuku, feeling the flaming power of one for all course through his body, vividly aware that the quirk was in fact trying to communicate with him in some way. If it goes poorly, I'll have to break a finger, amusedly offered Izuku, knowing fully well that a mere finger would be enough to blow away all of these villains. You really think you can take down us? You brats, furiously howled a man, electricity started sparking around his hands, as he raised them up and pointed them at the group. The hairs on Izuku's arms started standing from the charge in the air, only for it to disappear in a moment, as stream of soil slammed into the man. Izuku and Itsuka watched in clear wonder as Yanagi grounded the villain, causing the charge he had built up to enter the ground, before more soil curled up around him, immobilizing him with ease. Emerald green eyes scanned over the area, noting that every villain now seemed a bit nervous as they watched the man being slammed once into the ground, knocking him out with ease, and now every villain seemed anxious. He was the leader of this group, logically concluded Izuku, glancing over at Itsuka and Yanagi, both of whom seemed to catch onto his line of thought as Izuku chewed on his lower lip. People are at their most dangerous when they're cornered, but they should be demoralized. Grimly noted Izuku, staring at the hesitant ground of villains, before activating, watching them all freeze, as Izuku raised his right hand and braced himself, bracing his middle finger against his thumb. 
We need to get out of here, bluntly admitted Izuku, channeling more and more of one for all into his middle finger, quickly reaching 100% in a few seconds, before unleashing the built-up power in the form of a flick. So, you can't swim. Ribbit, slowly repeated Asui, staring at Ijiro with her large eyes, trying to figure out the situation, seeing what plans could possibly work and what plans most certainly wouldn't work. I can't swim with my quirk active, embarrassedly corrected Ijiro, who was shivering from the cold at this point, realizing that going shirtless into a fight wasn't the best idea. Besides, Bakugo can't use his quirk here either. And Kamori, what's your quirk again? Slowly spoke Ijiro, looking at the group of people he had been dropped off with, having slightly hoped he would have been with one of his friends. Since Ijiro didn't know anyone here, with the exceptions of Bakugo, who wasn't exactly someone who was friendship material in anyone's opinion. Mushroom. It lets me generate spores that can grow into mushrooms, but they have to land on solid surfaces or inside someone's body. Cheerfully informed Komori, who was looking over the water at the many aquatic villains circling around the boat. Bakugo glared down at his hands, furiously rubbing them together in order to get rid of all the water clinging to them. It was bad enough for him to be surrounded by extras, but the situation was worsened by the fact his quirk was temporarily unusable. Blood red eyes narrowed in concentration, staring at the three people who he had been stranded with, trying to remember something useful about them. Weird hair follows Deku around. Frog face. I didn't even know she was in our class, and Mushroom Freak doesn't have any close combat skills. Slowly recalled Bakugo, he did know their quirks at least, so that was something. Give me a minute and I'll blow them all away. Cockily declared Bakugo, his palms sparking erratically, as his palms were nearly fully dried. Now all he had to do was build up a decent amount of sweat. I don't mean to doubt your abilities, but isn't that the least of our worries? We have to think about everyone else's safety firstly. Stiffly questioned Kirishima, straightening his posture, making the red-haired teen look somewhat heroic for a brief second, if it wasn't for the fact his hair was dropping over his eyes. It's a man's job to protect everyone firstly. It terminately growled Kirishima, clearly disagreeing with Bakugo's view, making the blonde scoff at him. Heroes are supposed to take out the threat before then. Loudly snapped Bakugo as the boat started rocking, only for everyone on board to be thrown off their feet as a large wave slammed into the boat, snapping some of the timber near the bottom of the boat. Um guys, as much as you like arguing, I think we should come up with a plan, and fast, ribbit. Wearily stated Asui, her eyes wide with fright and panic, as she could feel the boat slowly titling to one side, meaning their time had become greatly limited. Hiroshima, can you survive an explosion? Curiously questioned Komori, a sharp grin growing on her face, as she started forming a crazy idea that just might work. Ooh, yeah, I think, hesitantly answered Kirishima, having not expected such a weird question. But considering there was more than a few shark-based villains down in the water, one could understand how the ideas were becoming desperate. Good enough. Back you go, you're gonna launch Kirishima and me to the shore, with Kirishima acting like a rocket. Asui, you can jump that, right. Happily explained Komori, which was surprisingly a good idea, since that meant everyone had a way to escape from the boat and the villains surrounding them. A tidal wave of water slammed into the boat, sending every student lurching to one side, a gasp escaping from Komori as she hit the deck and slid across the wood, slamming into the safety railing at the other side of the boat. Hiroshima managed to tighten himself before he fell, his body trembling in fright as he slowly peered over the side of the boat, staring down at the villains, who had no qualms with killing him, or anyone for that matter. Shitty hair, stop being a coward and get your ass over here. Loudly barked Bakugo, scowling down at Komori, who was now sitting down against the safety railing, clearly in pain, while Asui was crouched down beside the girl. You're gonna have to act like a cannonball, since I doubt that the mushroom freak can hold on to tightly anymore. So get ready, I wanna kill some villains while we have the chance. Gleefully chuckled Bakugo as Asui helped Komori to her feet, and Kirishima forced himself to calm down, fully aware of the fact that if he acted irrationally, he could get everyone killed. Why are they all here? Softly mumbled Kirishima, that was the one thing he couldn't get over, his curiosity as to why so many villains would be willing to invade a school where some of the most powerful heroes and quirks had gathered. I don't know, Ribbit, slowly croaked Asui, helping Komori to her feet as Bakugo started spinning his arms around, trying to gather blood in his hands in order to help heat them up faster so more sweat could be produced. I'm surrounded by idiots. All Might would have been with us today, it's a hero's course after all, so he should have been here to supervise it, but something came up. Uncaringly scoffed Bakugo, rolling his eyes in exasperation, before coming to a stop as he stared at the three people who were clearly in shock in front of him, not realizing what he was implying. All might dot 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 he is a human at the end of the day, and the only reason these thugs would be here is if they're confident that they can kill him. Gently mumbled Bakugo, which was severely out of character for him, but it seemed to get everyone up. How? We have to warn the others. Now, determinedly growled Kirishima, his body creaking as his skin hardened, cracking it throughout his whole body as the teen's durability increased immensely. Komori got to her feet as quickly as she could have, shakily making her way to Kirishima, clearly suffering some sort of injury from being slammed into a wooden safety railing. 
making the red-headed teen wrap her up in his arms. Sweat started crackling in Bakugo's hands as he watched Kirishima walk forward towards the safety railing, not a tremble in his steps as he faced towards the entrance of USJ, before turning around and letting himself fall backwards, hardening his entire body to the point where he was locked in place with Komori in his arms. I hope I never have to touch your feet again, loudly snarled Bakugo, his veins pulsing along his arms as he grabbed onto Kirishima's feet and placed both of his palms on the soles of his feet. Die, forcefully shouted Bakugo, a large pop echoing throughout the air, before smoke and fire flew from his palms, launching Kirishima and Komori through the air like a missile, hopefully getting them away from most of the danger. The others might not think it, but you're not as bad as you act. Ribbit, honestly hummed Asui, crouching down on the deck and kicking off a second later, leaving Bakugo alone in the middle of a sea of villains. Bakugo didn't say anything, all he did was point his palms downwards, grinning like a fool as he unleashed a second explosion, launching the team through the air, and at the same time, giving the blonde an overview of the whole air. The landslide zone caught his attention, not because of any particular villain or its appearance, but from the massive gale of air that originated from the top of it, sending villains and rubble flying with ease, carving a path through the zone, and there was only one person who Bakugo had the misfortune of knowing who had that sort of raw power. Deku, you better get out of here alive so I can beat your ass and the ideas of being a hero out of you at the sports festival. Mentally growled Bakugo, his blood red eyes gleaming in the light as he flew off, heading towards the entrance of the USJ. You don't have to do this. What would your mother think of this? She would be upset. Desperately shouted Izuku, ducking beneath a stream of fire that caused a few hairs on the top of his head to shrivel up from the heat, his right hand sore from the backlash of breaking his middle finger. <laughs> really? Dryly thought Izuku, staring at the villain in front of him, who had broken out into tears in front of Izuku, making the nine-feet-tall demon-looking man, who was covered in muscles look kind of like a puppy. You're right. I'm coming home, mom. Pathetically wailed the man, before turning around and running away from Izuku as everyone present paused for a second, staring at Izuku in equal parts fear and amazement. <laughs> the fact dating sims had a point, and knew it, Izuku couldn't help but feel just a little bit sour, since dating sims most certainly would not let Izuku live it down. I see you, KU. I don't know what you did, but the less guys we have to fight the better. Loudly howled Itsuka as she threw a particularly large boulder at a massive tree person, making a loud creak echo through the area as the person fell over. We're almost out of the landslide zone now, we'll be in the plaza soon. Encouragingly shouted Itsuka, which made a shudder race up Izuku's spine, since he could feel the faint tingle race up his spine whenever he looked in the general location of the plaza. Aizawa will need help. Grimly realized Izuku, flinging himself forward like a rocket, 6% of one for all's overwhelming power coursing through his body, making his joints groan under the strain as both Izuku and Itsuka closed in on the last remaining villains blocking their escape. He's an underground hero, there's no doubt he can fight off a crowd, but normally he'd be in an alleyway with coverages, not out in the open fight off more than three dozen villains, not to mention a monster. Logically assessed Izuku, the fact was, Aizawa would die if he didn't receive help, and that scared the green-haired teen. A shiver raced down Izuku's spine, followed by a gut sensation. Izuku didn't have a clue what it meant, but he knew what he had to do. Solidifying his stance, Izuku leaned backward, throwing his right leg into the air, his foot slamming into a metallic object, sending a ping through the air. Bursted free from Izuku as the woman with long, metallic nails froze in place, before she started frothing at the mouth, collapsing a second later. <laughs> Everything was happening so fast for Izuku, he had gained three new skills in the space of an hour, which Izuku had a feeling wasn't supposed to happen under normal circumstances. But normal circumstances for most people didn't involve being attacked by a group of villains or have a second, sentient quirk that had changing his quirk. Glancing over at the remaining group of villains, which had been knocked down to three at last, a shaky smile grew on Izuku's face as he stared over at Itsuka and Yanagi. You too good, carefully asked Izuku, keeping an eye on the three remaining villains, who were looking a lot more nervous now, which was a good and bad thing, while waiting on his friends to respond. People and animals are at their most dangerous when they're cornered, cautiously noted Izuku, taking a brief second to use his newest skill on the middle villain. Limited data indeed. Yeah, but my hands are starting to get cramps. Shakily huffed Itsuka, and Izuku actually took a second to look over at Itsuka, who was trembling now, with her hands shrunken down to their normal size, with the muscles in her hands are wrinkled and shriveled. I can continue for a while, softly answered Yanagi, smiling over towards Izuku, as she took a second to gather the dust and sand around her, but Izuku could see the sweat dripping down from her forehead. <laughs> That's useful to know. Let's get to the stairs then. Determinedly mumbled Izuku, quickly activating and focusing on the second villain, forcing them to stagger backwards from the green-haired teen's determination as Izuku launched forward, intending on taking out the last two villains by himself. Green electricity arched across Izuku's body as the teen shot off, his world blurring from the speed he was traveling at, his clothes rustling with the air resistance as Izuku kicked off the ground, sending him into the air. 
A light entered Izuku's eyes, while the teen tilted his body forward, his head aiming at the middle between the two villains, as their eyes finally registered what was happening. Unfortunately for them, it was too late. In a display of strength that would leave many with open mouths, Izuku caught himself with his hands, bringing his momentum to a complete halt, before the teen spring boarded off of the ground, just as the villain on the left lunged at him. A grunt escaped Izuku's mouth as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist flipped again, tightening himself as he plummeted back down, landing on the back of the villain, knocking them down for the count. First is oddly menacing, the second one. Is appropriate, I don't know what C even implies, and D is too risky. Rapidly thought Izuku, stepping off of the down villain, hearing a loud wheeze as he did so, which Izuku didn't pay any thought to. I'll let you surrender, easily stated Izuku, using as well, in order to increase the chance of the villain backing down. I, uh, I, he, uh, bewilderedly squealed the villain, her body quivering as she dropped to the ground, meaning every villain nearby had been defeated, with the scarce amount of time they had to relax before they moved on, Izuku used on the woman. So appraisal can tell me if my skill can affect a person, as well as if it has affected a person. Interestedly noted Izuku, making sure to make a mental note of the latest discovery about his weird quirk. I wonder if it can update me on the person as well. I know in some video games certain types of attacks can only affect someone after they lose enough health. Highly theorized Izuku, looking over at Itsuka and Ianagi, both of whom were looking upwards, and Izuku slowly copied them. Is that Kirishima? Confusedly mumbled Itsuka, rubbing her eyes in disbelief, as everyone watched a red blur shoot through the sky, with a splotch of brown on it as well. You're aware your rocket could have just removed her gravity, or Asui could have launched him with her tongue. Dryly countered Izuku, he knew full well that Ijiro was manly, manly enough to walk away after being shot sort of manly, but the red-haired teen wasn't manly enough to fly. Was he? Not to mention, Kirishima's quirk was hardening, so he couldn't have achieved it by himself. Kendo, will you catch him, or will he just collide into the ground with his passenger? Tiredly asked Yanagi, staring passively up at Kirishima, who was now visibly anxious, as he was rapidly approaching the ground near the group. Is that Komori? Easily added Yanagi, not quite believing her eyes. She wasn't expecting to see Komori riding Ijiro as if he was a rocket, but she didn't expect a villain attack today. Never let it be said that dating sims didn't have a way with words. Taking off into a sprint, green electricity crackled around Izuku as he reactivated one for all, multiplying the teen's speed immensely as Izuku estimated where Kirishima would land, which wasn't that far away from them. Sliding to a halt and crouching down, Izuku felt the muscles in his legs shudder from the stress, constantly using 6% of one for all was making its toll known, but someone was in danger, so the backlash would most certainly be worth it. Itsuka won't make it, bluntly noted Izuku, she was too far away, even if she activated her quirk she couldn't possibly make it, meaning Ijiro, who was the most likely to not suffer any injury would have to crash into the ground, but Komori was still at risk. E-I-J-I-R-O, you got this, get harder, plus ultra, loudly shouted Izuku, using, as his legs uncoiled like a spring, launching Izuku upwards like a rocket. Rapidly closing the distance between the two of them, Izuku could feel dating sims help him in some way, slowing down his perception of the world, like when he experienced the first meeting whenever he met a heroine, but faster. Like a snake, Izuku's arms shot forward, wrapping around Komori's waist, as Izuku soared forward with his passenger, sparing a glance back at Ijiro, who looked as if he had finally registered what Izuku had said. Thanks bro, simply mumbled Ijiro, a smile on his face as he realized that the green blur that had passed by was Izuku who was saving Komori, meaning the final bit was up to him now, and by his manliness he would do it. Reaching the apex of his leap, Izuku couldn't help but frown as he has a brief look over the area, noting that the conflagration zone wasn't on fire anymore. Instead it was frozen solid, various glaciers were coming through some buildings, cancelling the fire. It was the central plaza that had Izuku worried, since it was only Aizawa who was there, and despite there being so many villains being knocked out, the large, hulking, bird-like monster was just standing there impassively, not doing a single thing. Izuku used the skill without a single thought. <laughs> Namu, gently mumbled Izuku, bracing himself as he fell back down, hearing the shattering of rocks and earth, as Ijiro landed in his own way, before Izuku's feet slammed into the ground. A hiss escaped Izuku's mouth as he placed Komori on the ground, his knees and feet stinging from the impact of the landing, letting Izuku know not to do that again. Explosions echoed overhead, Izuku didn't flinch, since he only knew of one person who had explosions that sounded like that. You okay Komori? Carefully questioned Izuku, letting go of the constant flow of one for all, in order to let him rest for a brief while, knowing that things were about to get a whole lot tougher very shortly. Yep, Italy clarified the girl, popping the pee, as she grinned at Izuku, and the best thing was, that dating sims wasn't interfering at all. She wasn't a heroine, a small mercies in life. Rotoria, thanks for saving Komori, we didn't think that part of the plan through. Sheepishly chuckled Ijiro, walking towards Izuku and Komori covered in dirt and dust, but he seemed quite miffed about something. 
Speak for yourself, shitty hair, loudly growled Bakugo, glaring over the group of heroes in training, his eyes narrowing as they scanned the zone behind them, noting the unconscious villains littered throughout the area. They're here to kill All Might, Ribbit. Abruptly croaked Asui, hopping over to the group, her face looking oddly calm, but her eyes were a whirlwind of emotions, contemplating what to do. <laughs> really? Dryly huffed Izuku, he already knew what option he would go with. The last choice was cowardly, the second and third choice were useless, since Izuku already knew why, that left the first option. It's Namu, that's how they'll kill him. Grimly stated Izuku, drawing everyone's attention in a second, everyone staring at Izuku as if he had a second head. Do you want to explain, Deku? Viciously snarled Bakugo, huffing and puffing as he was bouncing up and down on his feet, a way for him to sweat a bit more than normal, which was useful, but Bakugo didn't seem as lively as normal. That thing, it isn't normal, by that I mean someone who was born like that. There's a high possibility that thing was created to fight All Might, meaning it might be genetically modified, and its quirk could be anything. Hurriedly theorized Izuku, his mind racing in multiple directions, thinking of plausible ideas and connection them, ruling out whatever seemed too outlandish, as a more concrete idea of what they were fighting came to mind, and a way to stop it. If we are going to take this down, we are going to need either Todoroki or Yuraka. Logically mumbled Izuku, doing his best to recall how Namu looked, down to the smallest detail, to its eyes, head, chest, arms, fingers, scars, stomach, legs, and feet. Why the Canadian flag or round face? Are you gone stupid or something Deku? Bewilderedly snapped Bakugo as everyone else looked at Izuku in confusion, trying to connect the dots Izuku had set down, and then Yanaga's eyes widened with realization. In order to nullify it, it will become a specter if any of those two get a clean shot at it. Calmly answered Yanagi, nodding at Izuku in understanding, as realization dawned on everyone else's faces. I know that Todoroki is already in the conflagration zone. But if it was made to fight All Might, would it not be better if it was Yuraka? Confusedly questioned Ijiro, who raised a good point. Even All Might would be helpless if he had his gravity taken away from him, since there would be nothing stopping him from launching himself into outer space. We should split up then. One group retrieves Todoroki, while the other finds Achako then. Easily suggested Itsuka, eyeing everyone present and nodding to herself, crouching down a second later and riding in the dirt. Kendo, big fist, physical fighter, martial artist. Kamori, mushroom, support fighter, Aya. Hiroshima, hardening, physical fighter, shield. Bakugo, explosion, physical fighter, range rider. Asui, frog, physical fighter, support. Midoriya, strength enhancement, physical fighter, range fighter. I suggest that the group who's going to get Todoroki should have Kirishima, as well as a physical fighter. While the group who is going around the other zones, rescuing the other students and trying to find Achako should have Komori and everyone else. Slowly spoke Itsuka, looking between everyone present, specifically at Ijiro and Komori in order to see their reactions. I'll go get Todoroki with Ijiro. Immediately piped up Izuku, staring down at his right hand, which already had two broken fingers on it, and at this point it was easier for him to use his feet. I can definitely take out a chunk of the villains in the plaza as we're passing, which will hopefully buy Aizawa some extra time. Cautiously added Izuku, he could see the disappointment in Itsuka's eyes. Apparently she wasn't a fan of him breaking his bones on purpose. She really wasn't a fan of it, it seemed. So it's Izuku and Ijiro to get Todoroki, while Kendo, Komori, Bakugo, and I try and find Achako, as well as save every other student, Ribbit. Easily summarized Asui, getting a nod from everyone present, as she turned her focus onto the nearest zone, which happened to be the mountain zone, not far from the conflagration zone. Aizawa could die if I don't do this, and I won't apologize for doing the right thing. Mentally answered Izuku, looking over at Ijiro and nodding. The burning sensation of one for all flowed beneath his skin as the duo launched forward, planning on going through a small section of the plaza villains. Forcing himself to run slower than normal, in order to keep pace with Ijiro, Izuku couldn't help but grimace as he clenched his right hand, feeling the bones in his broken finger shift, making him winch. But nonetheless, Izuku formed a fist. Izuku knew full well how sore breaking a bone was, but fortunately the pain would only be temporary. Dating Sims would do its best to numb the pain so he could focus. Where are you aiming? Curiously asked Ijiro, his face hard as he continued running forward, not using his quirk at all, in order to allow his muscles to rest somewhat. I'm planning on aiming close to the center of it, most likely just to the left of the center, so I can take out as many villains as possible, which should buy everyone some time. Harshly huffed Izuku, sweat was already starting to gather on his forehead from the constant movement of today, doing early morning workouts certainly wasn't helping him. If I can take out Kirajiri, then it should hopefully make it possible to arrest everyone here, so it won't happen again, as well as save people on the streets. On the other side of things, that means the villains can't run away if they feel threatened. 
decisively decided Izuku, clenching his right hand, his broken fingers twitching from the pressure he was applying, as red veins of energy crisscrossed his right arm, while pulling his right arm backwards, realizing what was happening at the center of the plaza. When for all, 100%, multiple things happened at once, the sickening crack of Aizawa's skull across the USJ made Izuku freeze, his blood chilling at the gruesome scene, of his teacher's head dripping blood, his right eye swelled shut, as an explosion of ice completely covered the conflagration zone, completely throwing off Izuku's aim. Gales of wind howled throughout the entirety of USJ, as Izuku threw his right arm forward, tears in his eyes as the image was burned into his mind. His teacher on the verge of death, as the pain of his arm shattering quickly brought Izuku back to focus. Ajiro, go find Todoroki, softly whispered Izuku, red veins of energy crossing throughout his whole body, fully aware he wouldn't be able to do much after this, but if he didn't do this, then Aizawa would die and Izuku had no doubt in his mind that him and his fellow students would follow suit afterwards. Everything had become a lot more real very quickly. Izuku slowly spoke Ijiro, looking at the trail of unconscious villains that had been easily whipped to the side of the plaza from Izuku's punch, and the worst part was, the guy covered in hands was looking at them. He could die, though it wasn't like Ijiro had to say those words aloud for them to be understood by the green-haired dating sim's protagonist. I'm a hero, I want to save everyone with a smile on my face, so if everyone ran when they got scared who would be left, sadly mused Izuku, crouching down as he rapidly began upping the power of one for was coursing through him, fully aware that he would have to rely on all of his skills now. The ground shattered beneath Izuku's feet as he pushed himself forward, his toes snapping loudly from the takeoff, breaking in an instant, yet it easily propelled Izuku to the Namu, desperately hoping to reach Aizawa before it was too late. Clenching his left hand hard enough to have his nails dig into his hands and draw blood, Izuku slammed his right foot into the ground, causing his right foot to sink into the ground a few inches, causing more cracks to form, before twisting his hips, putting his everything into this punch. Then the sonic boom from his takeoff caught up. Smash! Furiously howled Izuku, his left arm shot forward, shattering through the sound barrier again as a blur of speed, before coming to an abrupt halt as it collided with Namu. There's no pain. Dating Sims, rapidly noted Izuku, sparing a brief glance at his left arm, and noticed that his left arm wasn't broken at all, which was odd. You're an All Might fan as well, disgustedly spat Tamira, looking into Izuku's eyes, clearly and utterly deranged in every way, as a wicked grin slowly grew over the man's face. Not even All Might could defeat Namu. He's been modified to be the anti-symbol of peace. Crazily cackled Tamira, a massive shudder racing down Izuku's spine, letting Izuku know that he was in immense danger. Problem child. Wearily mumbled Aizawa, blood dripping down the side of his face, his right eye swollen shut from the damage he had received from his fight with the Namu, yet he still had the strength to try and protect his students. Kill the brat. Bluntly ordered Tamira, Aizawa's body collapsed to the ground a millisecond later, no longer being held up by Namu, while a shadow blocked Izuku's view of everything. The world slowed down for Izuku, not because of dating sims doing anything, but because as Izuku looked at Namu, whose fist was rapidly approaching his face, Izuku knew he would die from this. Dating Sims, it's been fun. Remorsefully thanked Izuku, knowing he had bought a few precious seconds that would hopefully save his friends from a fate similar to his own. Just before the fist collided with Izuku's face, he was pushed out of the way, causing Izuku to avoid the blow that would have led to his death. And as Izuku stumbled out of the way, he looked around to see his savior, Kirishima Ijiro, his best friend, who was taking Namu's punch for him. What felt like hours but was only a second in total, Izuku watched as Ijiro's skin hardened, his arms crossed across his face, as Namu's punch connected with Ijiro's arms. For a brief moment, Izuku thought he heard something over the sound of bones breaking from immense pressure, as Ijiro was flung backwards like a wrecking ball. Besides his broken bones and pounding heart, Izuku was almost perfectly healthy despite the situation he was in, but the green-haired dating sim's protagonist knew his luck wouldn't last long. Within a second, red veins of energy crawled around Izuku's body, bolstering his muscles and reaction speed to superhuman levels, and then Izuku closed his eyes, taking away his vision, solely relying on danger sense. Izuku knew what he had to do, stall Namu, Tamira, and Kurajiri until help arrived, and the only issue was, Izuku had to be an absolute minimalist in terms of movement as well, if he wanted to last more than a minute. I'm alive, confusedly gawked Ijiro, despite the fact his arms were hanging limply by his sides, both clearly broken, but that was more favorable than dying any day of the week. How? That thing was designed to kill All Might, how did I withstand that blow? Curiously mused Ijiro, his eyes watering as he started coughing, looking around and realizing he was surrounded by smoke, fire, and ice. The conflagration zone. Boy T-O-D-O-R-O-K-I. You hear? Hopefully shouted Ijiro, struggling to get to his feet with immense difficulty. All of his muscles uncannily sore, each muscle feeling as if they were about to snap at any given moment from the strain of supporting his own body weight. 
Silence. Nobody respond. Either Todoroki and whoever else was in the conflagration zone had already left, or the villains in here were a lot stronger than the other villains elsewhere. Tears of grief and anger gathered in Ijiro's eyes as he wobbled forward, determined to get back out there and help Izuku. Since Ijiro knew that was what Crimson Riot would do, get back up and get back into the fight if he got knocked out of it, and Ijiro would do that as well. Why did his eyelids feel really heavy? It's Kirishima, worriedly echoed a voice overhead, forcing Ijiro to tilt his head backward in order to see the source of the sound, which was a floating eye, ear and a mouth. Izuku, he's fighting Namu, weakly mumbled Ijiro, a vague sense of ease coming over him, since he knew someone in Wana had a quirk that let them detach their body parts, so it must be them. Help him, loudly grunted Ijiro, staggering forward and almost falling, hearing the sound of concrete being shattered with excessive force. Everything hurt and Izuku was barely staying away from the Namu. But now was not the time for it. Creaks and groans echoed from Izuku's legs, which had turned an ugly shade of purple. All of his toes were broken at this point, and each little twitch of his muscle made Izuku feel as if his legs were on fire and stuck in brimstone. Despite having his emerald green eyes closed, Izuku was nimbly dodging and ducking away from Namu's punches, moving in the opposite way of origin of the danger, barely handling a steady stream of 50% of one for all, and that was because dating Sims was numbing the pain, as well as Izuku keeping each dodge to minimum of movement. If you could do anything else I'd be grateful. Hurriedly respond Izuku, taking a deep breath in as he tilted his head to the right, narrowly avoiding a massive fist, larger than his head, flying by, breaking the sound barrier as it did so. Oh no, Izuku didn't like where this was going. Pain like no other made itself known to Izuku, his right arm felt like hell, his legs felt like they had been physically used as All Might's punching bag, and his ears were ringing as well. His arms weak, knees heavy, Izuku could only mentally berate himself as he felt himself lose his balance, flopping to the floor like a defenseless baby, utterly spent, unable to move a muscle. H-A-H-A-H-A. He fell. At last. N-O-M-U. Kill him. Now. Crazily cackled Tamira, Izuku opened his eyes and stared at Namu's own dull, lifeless, and thoughtless eyes as the creature reeled back its fist, preparing to squash Izuku like a bug. Everyone, thank you for the memories. Calmly thanked Izuku, waiting for the punch that didn't come, making Izuku blink as he saw Namu engulfed in a block of ice, before the ground and Namu started getting further away, making Izuku blanch. That's pretty awesome of you Midoriya, not many people would do what you did. Kindly hum Takage, her arms wrapped beneath Izuku's broken ones, not particularly gentle with her movements, but Izuku would rather be sore and alive than painless and dead. What? Pathetically croaked Izuku, coughing violently a second later, a wad of blood falling to the ground below. As Izuku realized that it was literally just Takage's upper body lifting him, meaning the soft thing supporting his head could only be one thing. Boobs, you've literally broke yourself in order to protect Aizawa, and it was only you as well, so that's pretty awesome in my books. Softly answered Takich, her eyes glancing down at the battered green-haired dating Sims protagonist in her arms, noticing all of his limbs, fingers, and toes were broken, as well as various cuts on his body. <laughs> Emerald green eyes drooped, struggling to stay open from the immense pain and exhaustion Izuku was feeling, but desperately watching the scene beneath him, as Takich took him back to the top of the stairs, the safe point. At this point, Todoroki had successfully entrapped Namu in a literal glacier of ice, dropping the temperature within the USJ to the point where Izuku could see his breath. As an explosion roared from the other side of the USJ, meaning Bakugo was fighting someone or was trying to get back to Namu now. Painfully, Izuku raised his right arm, he wanted to help everyone more, not be laying out of action, as everyone else struggled to fight for their lives. Previous successors have won for all. If you can do anything to help them, I'd be grateful. Slowly asked Izuku, heading the glacier of ice groaning, despite being so far away, meaning Todoroki's attempt at immobilizing the thing was unsuccessful. That only left Achako. Green eyes glazed over, every single thought within Izuku's head vanished, as his body seemingly shut down, except for the intense array of green sparks gathering and darkening in his right arm. Cracks spread through the glacier, causing it to finally fall apart, revealing the Namu to be perfectly fine, except it was noticeably more pissed off than before and ready to kill everyone here. It happened in a blur of movement, but Hugo slammed his right fist into the Namu's exposed brain, stunning it for a brief second, before someone else came running up behind Bakugo, Ida, with Achako on his back, who prominently slapped Namu, erasing its gravity. Dark green arcs of energy exploded from Izuku's right arm, sending a wave of pure agony through the teen's body, but in an instant, Izuku knew what it was. Black Whip. Dark threads of energy flew through the air, it was moving by itself, completely independent from Izuku, as the Namu tried to stretch out its hand so it could crush Achako with it. A meaty thud echoed through the area as Black Whoop slammed into Namu's chest, knocking the creature back effortlessly, before it abruptly shot upwards, slamming into the weightless Namu's jaw, sending it flying upwards, neutralizing the largest threat at the moment. 
What? Furiously screamed Mira, crazed red eyes following the threat of black energy back to its source, locking eyes with Izuku a second later, angering Tamura even further. Made itself no, as Izuku stared down at Tamura, despite his limbs being broken and his body battered to a pulp, Izuku's glowing green eyes made Tamura freeze for a single second. All that was left was Tamura and Kirajiri, and Izuku was certain everyone else could take care of those two, as well as the remaining thugs. But Aizawa, why? Dazedly asked Izuku, his vision swimming as Black Whip dissipated into the air, as Namu's body thudded against the roof of USJ, a comical sound, despite the situation. I am here, furiously howled a man, who had been wronged, the doors of the USJ bursted open a second later, revealing the hulking form of All Might, who had frowned on his face, as he walked into USJ, everyone going silent as they watched the strongest man in the world. Really should have been a doctor, sadly mumbled one of the many villains, before All Might disappeared in a blur, a sonic boom echoing across USJ, multiple villains either flying into the air or slamming into the ground, as the students of Wane and Aizawa appeared at the base of the stairs. Ah, oh, we are saved, happily mumbled Izuku, feeling his body being laid down on top of the stairs, and everything felt oddly comfortable for a change, as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist felt his eyes close against his will, drifting into a state of unconscious a second later, not seeing the notification over his head. Izuku's eyes snapped open, vivid memories of what happened assaulted Izuku's mind. 5% of one for all course through the teen's body, only for his arm to groan audibly, and something solid hit his head, before a gummy was held out in front of him. Slowly blinking, Izuku stared at the gummy, looking at the person who was holding it out to him. Recovery girl was standing in front of him, with her lips pursed. Calm down brat, it's over and nobody died. Softly soothed recovery girl, as Izuku slowly accepted the gummy, popping it into his mouth a second later, realizing that his left arm and both of his legs were still broken, and still had various cuts on his body. How is everyone? Worriedly gasped Izuku, his throat parched from lack of use, grateful as recovery girl handed him a cup of water, which had been downed in an instant. Besides you being the most injured, Aizawa has a fractured skull, a few new facial scars, a broken arm, and several broken ribs. Thirteen is in critical condition. Lastly is that Kirishima boy, both of his forearms are broken, a clean snap for both of them fortunately, but for some reason all of his muscles look like they've been squished badly. Calmly explained recovery girl, taking the empty cup away from Izuku and giving him some of her gummy bears. Other than that, some of the students have the side effects of overusing their quirks. Happily added recovery girl, smiling as she saw Izuku's eyes roll back into his head, she was surprised he had woken up so early, despite however briefly it had been. Why did you call me here Chiyo? Everything will be okay with young Midoriya, won't it? Concernedly questioned Tashinori Yagi, gazing at his young, green-haired successor, who had surpassed all of expectations in every single way. Besides the broken bones, torn and pulled muscles, and damaged ligaments, he's perfectly okay. Sarcastically responded Chiyo, rolling her eyes as she hopped up onto her chair, and rapidly started typing onto her computer, pulling up different files that she had found confusing. I had taken some blood samples from Izuku in order to check up on how his body is handling the multiple quirks inside of him, but importantly something has happened to his quirk factor. Interestedly hummed Chiyo, brining up the file, and gestured at Tashinori to get closer. Why? What's wrong? Concernedly questioned Tashinori, walked towards Chiyo with the look of distress clear on his face, as the skeletal man made his way to Chiyo so he could see what was on the computer screen. What was on the computer screen would look alien to most, and the only people who could recognize it at a glance would be quirk doctors or quirk specialists, and even then they would be miffed at what they would be seeing. Due to having the exact same quirk, Tashinori could easily note which one was one for all, before noting the weirdly shaped jigsaw piece that was Midoriya's quirk, dating sims, but something was different about it, as well as the minuscule quirk factors of the previous successor's quirks. Midoriya will be the last host of one for all. Grimly stated Chiyo, making Tashinori freeze up at those words. If Izuku was the last host, that meant he would beat all for one, which was a good thing. But why did Chiyo sound so grim? Huh, isn't that a good thing? Confusedly questioned Tashinori, arching a brow as he saw Chiyo type something onto the computer before the quirk factors on the screen started moving. Nothing happened for the first second, but then dating Sim's quirk factor did something odd. It started stretching, ignoring one for all, the nearest quirk factor, in favor of one of the smaller ones, before it simply connected to one of the smaller quirk factors, which was simply absorbed by dating Sims. It was then Tashinori noted that dating Sims' quirk factor was noticeable larger, and got larger with each quirk factor it absorbed, until only itself and one for all was left. Then to Tashinori's horrifying amazement, he watched as dating Sims ate one for all, massively increasing in size. In some aspects, yes, but this is just a guess as to what will happen with the available data, though I don't know what will happen to Izuku's body if his quirk factor grew so large so quickly. Wearily sighed Chiyo, before pulling up dozens of other files with ease, showing off dozens of various quirk factors from random civilian to heroes, and none of them looked like dating Sim's oddly shaped jigsaw piece. 
Toshinori, whoever Midoriya's father is, I doubt his quirk was simply fire breathing, which was likely just a cover story, or Izuku's quirk was artificially created. Sadly added Chiyo, those were two of most logical explanations she had at the moment, and she didn't know what was worse. The fact someone had altered Izuku's genetics, or the fact that only one person had a vaguely similar quirk to him. In a sense it's good that Izuku and I are the last people to use one for all. Once that bastard is taken down, we can let one for all fade out of existence. Simply mulled Tashinori, staring down at his successor, the one who would surpass him in so many ways and inspire everyone around him. His successor, Midoriya Izuku, the ninth and final user of one for all and ladies man. That's a wrap folks. The USJ arc has finally concluded, which was close to 20k words, which is pretty decent by my standards. The sports festival will be starting soon, but before then, the next chapter will be Izuku getting ready for it, training for fighting style, and grinding some of his skills. And Izuku is the last successor of one for all, and dating sims has become an even more complex quirk than before. Do we have a deal? Stiffly asked Hizashi, the English teacher of UA, or the pro hero more commonly known as present Mike, and the yellow-haired man had made Izuku the deal of a lifetime. Fully marks in every English test and assessment for the rest of his time in UA, if he successfully stole Aizawa's obnoxious, yellow sleeping bag, without being caught. Or, I could spend that time practicing one for all and improving my kicking. Dryly responded Izuku, a part of him felt as if it would be cheating to take part in such an unheroic deal, but it would be illogical of him to deny such a deal. Izuku was certain Aizawa would be proud of his logic. Do you want me to have spare time or not? Exasperatedly questioned Izuku, rolling his emerald eyes as he nodded at Izashi, his mind running a light here a second, coming up with a way to get Aizawa away from his sleeping bag, which hadn't been seen before. Aizawa and his sleeping bag were stuck together, like bees and flowers, bakugou and explosions, and all might and muscles. Without the other, it didn't seem right, like something in the universe had gone wrong. Basically, Izuku was about to commit a crime. Slowly following his quirk's advice, Izuku stared upwards, his green eyes landing on a vent, which was pretty normal in the hallways of UA, but what was a cause for concern were the pair of black eyes that met Izuku's. The fact that white capture scarves had slid through the grid of vents and had bounded and gagged his ashy should have been a concern, but the fact someone was in the vents was scary. Problem child, if you walk away now and forget about your deal with this Muppet, you can escape. Frostily promised Aizawa, his eyes flashing red as they landed on his ashy, flickering back to Izuku a second later, and a shiver raced up Izuku's spine. <laughs> Turning on his heels, Izuku ran, leaving his foolish English teacher to his own demise, at the hands of Aizawa and his crusty sleeping bag. Speech, hey what is up? Shouting, oh my god damn toe. Thinking, she looks pretty cute. Quirk notification. <laughs> Izuku felt horrible. His body still ached, despite being fully healed at this point, and dating sims couldn't do anything about it, nor did Izuku want to take any medication, since he was certain he would be back to full health in a few days at most. That wasn't mentioning how worried his mother was about him, and how he had almost died trying to distract Namu, but he didn't, so Izuku couldn't really see the point. It wasn't like he did die or anything. Anyone would count themselves luckily if that was all of their worries. Unfortunately Izuku had more to his plate than he wanted to deal with. Some of the issues could be avoided for a while, some were coming at him and he could do nothing about it, and others could be put off for a while. The issues that could be avoided temporarily was his growing relationship with all of the heroines he had met so far. The issue that could be put off for a while was simply getting out of bed, and the issue he could do nothing about was dating sims absorbing one for all. There was also the fact that Yanagi was now friends. On a side note, she knew a lot about movies, not just horror ones. Thanks for the reminder mom. Dryly brooded Izuku, not looking forward to being productive on the two days off he had from UA, since Nezu had deemed it important that one had a chance to recovery. Slowly kicking his blanket off of him, Izuku shuddered as he felt the precious heat escape from his bed. It wasn't cold out at all, but there was something special about a warm bed that the hot days of summer could never mimic. Rolling out of his bed and onto the floor, Izuku laid still for a second, gathering his bearings from his bedroom floor, before the green-haired dating sims protagonist pushed himself up, deciding to get ready for the day. Dating sims, how is the progress with assimilating danger sense going? Curiously yawned Izuku, arching his back backwards and stretching out his arms, hearing his limbs and back crack from the stretches, before the green-eyed teen saw his tracksuit, which he would be using today. <laughs> At the moment, a way of reliably attacking at range that doesn't involve me breaking my bones sounds nice, so Black Whip. Curiously amused Izuku, he already had enough physical power at the moment, so Fajin wouldn't be much use yet, Float and Smokescreen were for support more so, and Izuku knew nobody in Class 1 would warrant the use of those two, with the exception of Bakugu, who could fly. Dating sims had an issue, several to be factual, all of them revolved around girls and being a sarcastic asshole, but nobody was perfect. There was something odd walking around a city, trying to find a building's name, that had been messily scribbled onto the corner of a page, which was his only source of identification, on where Mina's possible dance club could be. 
On the bright side, Izuku had left extra early for such a specific reason, because Izuku knew, despite looking up where it was, he would get lost. It was inevitable. Why couldn't you be a GPS? Exasperatedly questioned Izuku, squinting as he took out his phone, about to give up and Google where the building was. Okay, uncertainly answered Izuku, putting his phone back into his pocket and thought of the pink-skinned girl that was called Ashido Mina, trusting his quirk not to make him look like a fool. Excitable and energetic, she could light up a room with how cheery and optimistic she was, and she truly enjoyed hanging out with her friends and doing what she loved. Not to mention, out of everyone Izuku had met, Mina's appearance was by far the most unique. A warm breeze hit the back of Izuku's head, making the green-haired dating sim's protagonist open his eyes, recognizing the sensation as heroin detector. That was oddly useful, but it felt a bit weird to know that I can find any of the girls who are heroines with ease. Happily thought Izuku, glad to finally know where he was going, a large smile on his face as he all but went as still as aboard a second later. Will you ever develop a less creepy skill? Hopefully asked Izuku, fully aware that it would be very suspicious and weird if he knew where each heroine was, meaning he could find where they live with ease. You're weird, simply decided Izuku, continuing his walk forward, pulling up his skill list and stats that was invisible to the world as the green-haired dating sim's protagonist peered at his skill list. Charm, 63. Intelligence, 54. Aura, 64. Skills. As Izuku walked, he chewed his lower lip, following the warm breeze hitting his face, while walking towards Mina, currently in conflict with himself, since Izuku knew of a way of leveling up, but using his quirk in public was illegal. Simply put, all Izuku had to do was spam the skill as much as he could on everyone he passed, which would hopefully increase the level of skill rather quickly. Walking along in silence, Izuku continued walking, approaching Mina, who was now only a few dozen meters away from him, and now Izuku knew what building he had to enter. Bracing himself, Izuku discreetly glanced towards the left, activating on a person, who had a pair of walrus tusks, gulping as he saw the screen materialize in front of him, taking his focus completely. Izuku, over here. Happily cheered Mina, winching as Izuku walked into a pole, aware that Izuku must have been thinking of something important if he was so lost in thought, but it was funny. Hi, oh, hi Mina, painfully huffed Izuku, clutching his nose, which luckily wasn't bleeding, but his confidence suffered more than anything else, which wasn't a first for the green-haired teen. Get your head out of the clouds, it's time I get you to start dancing. Italy stated Mina, skipping over to Izuku with a massive grin on her face, as she made her way over to the green-haired dating sim's protagonist, and started dragging him towards the dance studio. I think breakdancing would be good for you. It's perfect since I do it as well. Now let's see what you're made of. Excitedly explained Mina, a sense of dread formed in Izuku's gut, as he knew how it would end before it even began. Izuku was puffing, his body was sore, Mina was staring blankly at him, and everyone else who was in the small room with them had remained unmoving for a while now. Not quite sure what to think of what Izuku had just done, since nobody in their right mind would call what Izuku did dancing. If one was to describe what Izuku did, tasering a fish while it was on a swing would be the most accurate description anyone could give since Izuku was basically wild, no rhythm, and stiff as a board. How did I do? Optimistically asked Izuku, unaware that everyone stared at Mina in sympathy. Everyone was fully aware that Mina had been bragging about teaching one of her classmates how to dance, but they didn't expect it to be this bad. Ah, uh, um, you could use some points in practice. Slowly answered Mina, chewing on her lower lip, staring at her classmate who was actually surprisingly popular in 1A, despite being awfully meek most of the time. Yet you broke our deal, immediately countered Izuku, brushing off what dating sims had said, fully aware that Mina didn't think that of his dance skills, and then Izuku saw Mina's pursed lips. Was I that bad? Slowly inquired Izuku, a bit of doubt now forming in his gut, as the green-haired teen realized that he had a long way to go before he could actually use the fighting style he had created effectively. Can you make this a skill? Curiously questioned Izuku, since dancing would be a skill that could be used to impress the heroines, if he used it for such a purpose. He could use a bit of work, but luckily for you, I am here. Helpfully declared Mina, knowing that Izuku had a long way to go, but if he was determined, he could become decent at it. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Is there some sort of correlation between my stats and skills, like when my stats reach 100, will I unlock another skill for each stat? Interestedly questioned Izuku, since he hadn't expected skills to be created by his stats, he hadn't ruled out the idea that he could get skills tat would make him a better house husband, but not skills like intent or appraisal. So Izuku, let's get started with the basics, how to dance to a rhythm. Cheerfully hummed Mina, her yellow eyes glowing as she skipped over to a large speaker, pulling out her phone, and stared at it intently, thinking of what song to play for Izuku. Baby Shark, Oh Cha Cha Slide. Interestedly noted Mina, knowing that the latter song way good for beginners to learn how to keep a beat, as well as introduce them to the basics of footwork and balance. It's weird, I've never heard of a quirk suppressing itself before. Confusedly recalled Izuku, perking up as he heard the speaker pulse loudly, connecting to Mina's phone as she quickly ran back to Izuku. Okay Izuku, 
Follow me, this is easy, excitedly cheered Mina, shuffling about so she was standing beside Izuku, grinning like a fool, making Izuku look at her, before the girl in question winked at him, earning a blush from Izuku as he realized how tight Mina's outfit was on her. This is something new. Immediately Mina loosened her stance, getting ready for the song that had started playing, and Izuku copied her. How bad could a simple dance be? That was the longest hour in my life. Exhaustively sighed Izuku, sweat was dripping down his forehead, plastering his green hair to his head, making it hard for Izuku to see through his green locks of hair that were currently covering his eyes. Don't worry Izuku, that was just a tiny bit of the basics, that was all footwork really, soon we'll be getting into what arm movements you have to do while dancing, as well as shaking those hips. Encouragingly explained Mina, not breathing nearly as heavily as Izuku, who didn't have the finesse she did, so that was why the green-haired dating sims protagonist was exhausted compared to her. At least learner will help level up my skills. Relievedly noted Izuku, only to feel a subtle shift within himself, letting the green-haired teen know that dating sims was sheepish for some odd reason. Dating Sims, dryly asked Izuku, he knew that Dating Sims knew something that would spoil his mood, and Izuku didn't know when or how he learned to do this, all the teen knew was that he could. What did he know? Dating Sims did spoil his mood with ease. How much faster then do my skills increase? Sourly inquired Izuku, putting both of his hands behind his head, as he regained his breath, glad that Mina wasn't making him jump into the more intense stuff immediately. Not even a rough estimation. Hopefully pleaded Izuku, if he could somehow figure out how many times he had to do a skill in order to level it up, it would give him a general idea on how fast each skill leveled up on average. It's not that bad actually, a nice boost. Pleasantly noted Izuku, his mind flashing back to the USJ, more specifically when he had managed to make a villain stand down by his mere words alone, which sparked an idea. Dating Sims, would it be possible to make every villain I ever fight stand down, without having to throw a punch? Curiously asked Izuku, the simple spark of an idea grew, rapidly transforming into a fire within Izuku's mind, as a rough estimation on how effective such a method would be. Izuku, are you ready? Rhetorically asked Mina, knowing that the break was up, now it was time to work up a sweat and hammer the rest of the basics into Izuku. Yeah. Happily sighed Izuku, lowering his arms as he walked towards Mina, ready to continue practice dancing. It didn't even level up. Disappointedly noted Izuku, he had hoped thanks to that would have leveled up at least once today, which would have been his first time leveling his skill up. Will I always get the relationship with Mina whenever I dance with her? Dryly asked Izuku, he half expected it to happen, since there already was the thing with Mirko, and gaining relationship with her via showing up. So it's almost like when I participate in a heroine's hobby, I get relationship whenever I do it with them. Slowly asked Izuku, he was somewhat sure that was the case, since it made a lot of sense in the real world. I'm actually kinda hungry now. Abruptly mumbled Izuku, pulling his phone out of his pocket and staring at the time, realizing that he would have eaten lunch an hour ago, so it wasn't surprising he was hungry. I know a nice ramen place if you want to go. Helpfully offered Mina, unaware that Izuku's perspective of the world came to a complete stop, as three choices appeared in front of the teen. Is the third one about Naruto and his love of orange? Confusedly asked Izuku, not receiving an answer from dating sims at all, which made the teen shrug, before looking over his choices, and weighing his stomach into the equation as well. Sure, happily agreed Izuku, he knew that many people would call this a date, but it wasn't, simply because two teens of varying genders ate together, didn't mean they liked each other. Great, it's only a few minutes walk from here, and it's to die for, cheerfully explained Mina, rushing up to Izuku and grabbing his hand, dragging the green-haired dating sims protagonist behind her, unaware of the red blush slowly making its way up Izuku. Izuku's neck. I recommend the Miso Ramen personally, with the extra ramen, it's the best one in the shop. Energetically recommended Mina, running out the door of the dance studio, and took a left, dashing down the street with Izuku behind her. Uh, meekly chirped Izuku, the blush on his face slowly intensifying, as people parted for the odd duo. And Izuku was vividly aware of the fact that the people he passed, especially the women, were smiling at him, and Izuku could only imagine what he looked like. Sometimes, Izuku wondered if he had been born with the wrong quirk, would Mina not be a more suitable user for dating sims, though Izuku would admit it, he liked both of his quirks a lot. Almost walking into a tree branch, if it wasn't for danger sense sending a tingle down his spine, Izuku ducked, feeling leaves tickle his nape from the action. Sorry, sheepishly chuckled Mina, despite the barely missed accident, Mina continued pulling Izuku after her, and from the way she was gradually slowing down, Izuku had to assume they were nearing the place in question. And we are here. Relievedly sighed Mina, letting go of Izuku's hands and gesturing at the quaint little building in front of her, which looked quite homely more than anything, and from the noise coming from it, it was popular enough. Huh, big hearty ramen. A unique name, slowly commented Izuku, following Mina as she skipped forward, grinning as she did so, and launched herself at the door, and swung it open, standing proudly as she did so. I am here, loudly cheered Mina, from the way everyone just ignored her, Izuku assumed that either the people inside were used to dealing with people like Mina, or were used to dealing with Mina. Ah oh, Mina, it's been a while since you've came here. 
happily chuckled a man. Hesitantly, Izuku walked after Mina as she walked through. Some of the customers even nodded at her as she passed, which she waved to. But her main focus was the man with yellow eyes and horns behind the counter, and from the way he held himself, he owned the place. Dad, this is my friend, Midoriya Izuku. He's in the same class as me. Casually introduced Mina, the man's eyes zeroed in on Izuku. Before he stared him down, Izuku didn't know what was worse, the fact everyone was looking at him, or danger sense sending a faint tingle down his spine. Midoriya, Mina has been telling me a lot about her classmates. Your name seems to pop up a lot. Any reasons why that is the case? Stiffly asked the man. Mina seemed oblivious to what her father was doing, as she walked to the counter and took a seat, with a free one beside her, as Izuku was silently panicking. Was this the cliché overprotective father that Izuku never wanted to meet, since this man gave off a vibe scarier than some of the thugs at USJ? Choice it would get me killed. B so far looks the best. C makes it like me and Mina have a thing going on. And D slowly trailed off Izuku, ruling out the first and third choice, which didn't comfort Izuku much at all, since the second and fourth choices weren't much better, but D had the potential to be good. Did you know Chinese checkers were made in Germany? Curiously asked Izuku, a head of sweat running down his head, at the blatant fact that he just ignored Mina's dad's question, and hoped that the man was something like his daughter. He also dances with me now. Helpfully added Mina, a shiver raced up Izuku's spine, as the man's yellow eyes locked onto Izuku's own, almost like they were assessing him for his measly worth. Two bowls of miso ramen, coming up. Loudly barked the man, a vein was pulsing on his forehead. It was clear to Izuku, and every other male present, that Mina's dad was doing his best not to lose it. Come on Izuku, have a seat. I don't bite. Cheekily giggled Mina, animatedly slapping a seat beside her at the counter, which Izuku could have sworn wasn't empty earlier, but he wasn't one to pass up a free seat, no matter how close to an angry man it was. Unless you like it. Flirtatiously whispered Mina into Izuku's left ear as he sat down, making Izuku slowly turn to look at Mina, and for some reason she looked different. Click. Whatever way the light was hitting her, Izuku couldn't help but gawk through the nuclear red blush on his face, as he looked at Mina's eyes sparkling with mischief, and the smile on her pink face only enhanced her appearance. Yet the moment disappeared as soon as it happened, since Mina hurriedly looked away, leaving the green-haired teen staring at an empty space. Was she always so beautiful? Hesitantly thought Izuku, twisting around and staring down at the counter, his mind racing a mile a second as his mind seemed to be determined to replay the scene in his head over and over again. For some reason, instead of the dread Izuku had been expecting to feel didn't surface, instead he felt content. He knew this wasn't dating Sim's doing, it was his own doing that was getting the heroines' his attention. Frankly, Izuku was okay with that now. My Izuku is having friends over. Oh Izuku is the place clean enough. Did you clean your room? Do you have enough money to buy food if you go out? Worriedly ranted in Ko, scrabbling around her apartment, which was already sparkling clean thanks to the mother-son duo. Yes, I also mopped the floors. Immediately countered Izuku, staring over at the freshly cleaned floors, before turning turns the kitchen and eyeing the empty sink, his eye vividly twitching at the fact that dating sims seemed kind today. Three new skills. Exasperatedly sighed Izuku, turning his attention onto the three freshly created skills, that tauntingly floated in front of him, his mother unaware of his plight. <laughs> Wouldn't that mean I have alternative plans to become a hero? Confusedly asked Izuku, not quite sure what Dating Sims was saying, but he got the general gist of it, no matter how incorrect Dating Sims was in his deliverance of it. Didn't Dark Shadow quote Shakespeare before? Amusedly countered Izuku, fully aware that if anyone read his mind, they would think he was crazy, but Izuku did have a legitimate counter for his instant. Dating Sims. Izuku, when did you say your friends would be here? It soon isn't. Curiously questioned Inko, watching as her son blinked at something, before the green-haired dating sims protagonist opened his mouth, only to feel a warm breeze on his face. I think it would be better if I just opened the door now. Nervously answered Izuku, licking his lips out of nervousness, since this was the first time he had people over in more than a decade. The last person who had been over was Bakugu, before his quirk manifested. Oh wow, it had been a while since anyone who he called a friend had been over to his place. What was he even supposed to do then? Go and play video games. Walk. Explore. Gently twisting the door handle, Izuku only realized how dry his throat was as he opened up the door, hearing the sound of multiple people talking outside, before the door was fully swung open. It was an odd sight seeing all of his friends in regular clothing. A part of Izuku had grown used to seeing them in their school uniforms or hero outfits, not their own personal clothing. Broidoria. Thanks for having us over. Excitedly greeted Ijiro, holding out his right fist for a fist bump, and Izuku awkwardly complied with him, not expecting Ijiro to have so much energy. Nice place you got. Casually added Ijiro as he walked in and took off his shoes, grinning all the while. Izuku, thank you for inviting us. It is a pleasure to be here. Formally greeted Ida, bowing his head forward in appreciation, his eyes sparkling in amusement and gratefulness before he walked in, taking off his shoes as he did so. Izuku, how are you? Are you okay? 
cheerfully asked Achako, an infectious bubbly smile on her face, as she all but skipped into Izuku's apartment, gasping in amazement as she did so. Hey, thank you for having me, Midoriya, awkwardly mumbled Tsunotori, nervously fidgeting with the helm of her shirt, fumbling past Izuku, before the green-haired dating sim's protagonist heard a gasp from the girl. Gotta take of my shoes, abruptly mumbled Tsunotori, a smile of amusement grew on everyone's face, as Izuku turned to greet his last guest of the today, Shizeki Ibarra. Hello Ibarra, come in please, politely greeted Izuku, stepping back and gesturing for Ibarra to come in, and she was dressed quite luxurious for the occasion, since it reminded Izuku of a nun's outfit. Go, Izuku I didn't know you'd have so many friends over today, excitedly shrieked Inko, an embarrassed blush started crawling up Izuku's neck as Ibarra walked past him, before the teen closed the door and turned around to look at his group of friends. Are any of these your girlfriends? Happily gasped in Ko, her eyes twinkling like stars as she gazed over all of the girls present, no doubt mentally theorizing how the grandchildren would turn out. Izukun, I have absolutely wonderful news for you that I know that you are dying to hear. Achako is so close to moving up into the next stage now, just one more point and she will start devolving a crush on you. I know, slowly answered Izuku, his eyes darting around the room, looking at all of his friends, before the green-haired dating sims protagonist pulled up the catalog of Achako. She's literally on the edge of it, dryly noted Izuku, aware that his friends were talking to his mom, and that she was gushing about the fact that he had brought friends over, but she deserved to be happy about his life for once. Izuku stood up like a ramrod had been shoved up his back, as Izuku locked eyes with Ibarra's own, before Izuku saw Ibarra silently gesturing at him to come closer to her. The uneasiness in Izuku's gut faded after a few seconds, Ibarra was a friend of his after all, so she wouldn't do anything to embarrass him, and for all Izuku knew, she just wanted to know where the bathroom was. Doing his best to look at ease as he walked over to his group of friends, the majority of whom were looking at a book Inko had brought out, his baby book much to his own mortification, the only exception was Ibarra, who was waiting patiently for him. Something fell off, Izuku didn't know what it was, Danger Sense was not alerting him of any danger nearby, instead the whole atmosphere of the apartment felt fuzzy and warm. Izuku, I have to ask you something. Shyly mumbled Ibarra, Izuku blinked, the green-haired teen wasn't sure, but Ibarra had a faint blush on her cheeks, and there was sparkles coming from behind her. Yeah, nonchalantly asked Izuku, his left eye twitching ever so slightly from dating Sims's antics, fully aware what his quirk was thinking about the heroine in front of the green-haired dating Sims protagonist, and Izuku was doing his damnedest to not panic. What are we doing anyway? Or, we going into your room? Gently gasped Ibarra, Izuku did not like the half-lidded gaze Ibarra was giving him, but Izuku did actually have a plan on what he and his friends would be doing. I thought we could all go out to the park and talk about the plan for the sports festival. Idly answered Izuku, immediately the atmosphere in the room tensed, since everyone besides Izuku had nearly forgotten about the whole thing after the attack on USJ. And we could even give each other ideas about how to use our quirks in new ways. Wishfully mumbled Izuku, staring down at his right hand, which briefly flickered as a arc of dark green electricity danced around his hand. Yeah, that sounds awesome dude. Excitedly cheered Ijiro, grinning from ear to ear, pleased with the idea that his friends could possibly help him improve his basic, yet useful quirk. I like this spot. Happily declared Yuraka, plopping herself down onto one of the many benches in the park, as Ida and Ibarra took a seat either side of her, leaving Izuku and Ijiro to stand nearby and sit on the ground respectively. It was nice Izuku decided, hanging out with people from school, all of whom he considered a friend, it was a shame Momo couldn't attend it, but Izuku was sure he could inform her of his idea soon. Nervously swallowing the spit that had gathered in his mouth, Izuku looked over his friends, making a mental note on all of their quirks and what they had demonstrated so far. Tenya Ida, Injim. Able to run at high speeds for a while, no limit currently documented, but it depends on his fuel. Like his brother, Ida needs fuel for his engines, but unlike his brother, he has his engines in his calves and not his shoulders. This could allow him to glide temporarily, as well as install a cooling system into his hero costume. Achako Uraraka, gravity, lets her remove the gravity from an object or person. If she touches them with all five pads on her fingers, her current limit is three tons. Is it possible for her to reduce the gravity on a person and not outright remove it? Or is it a case of all or nothing? Plus, if she knows how to remove gravity, can she possibly increase it? Hiroshima Ijiro, hardening. Ijiro contents his skin and muscles to the point of withstanding explosions, bullets, knives, and other dangerous objects, as well as use his hardened hands as a battering ram or sharp knife. So far, from what I can tell, his weight doesn't increase while he is using his quirk but his mobility is gone if he fully hardens, mobility training while fully hardened would be great for him. Sunotori Pony, Horn Cannon. She can shoot out the horns on her head and control them, allowing her to attack from a range. It most likely is possibly for her to fly on one of her horns, but increasing how many she can fire is important. 
Is it possible for her to get a pill that contains the necessary nutrients to help her regrow her horns faster? Shizeki Ibarra, Vines. Her hair has been replaced with vines that grow from her head, which she can control fully, allowing her to bind enemies or whip them easily. Is it possible for Ibarra to use her vines as a way of sensing vibrating underground? Can she control them when they are detached from her scalp? And can she grow different sorts of vines from her head? So Izuku, why do you want to talk about the sports festival? Curiously inquired Ida, there wasn't a smile or even a frown on his face. Instead he was staring neutrally at Izuku, as if he was curious about Izuku's thought process. Yeah, why is that? Don't get me wrong, I like hanging out with you guys, but I thought we would be doing teenager stuff. Sheepishly chucked Ijiro, rubbing his nape with his right hand, before Izuku chewed his lower lip, not sure how to word this particular issue. You guys know my quirk is odd. I can enhance my strength to the point of destroying the zero pointer with one punch. I can increase my sense of touch to give myself a sixth sense. And in the USJ, I had a way of ranged attacks. What I'm saying is, we can help each other to get far into sports festival. All of us can get into the third stage if we are smart. Honestly answered Izuku, he could feel one for all burn inside of him. But what worried Izuku ever so slightly was the fact that the roaring inferno of one for all felt just slightly weaker than before. Dating Sims was slowly assimilating the quirk, bit by bit, and Izuku nor anyone else knew how that would affect the quirk. It's about Bakugou, isn't? Bluntly asked Yuraka, watching as Izuku stiffened like a pole at the blonde's name, confirming everyone's suspicions about the whole meetup in general. What does this have to do with Bakugou? Confusedly questioned Pony, Izuku was actually a bit relieved by the fact that the incident in question wasn't being spread around the entirety of UA like the juicy gossip it was. Bakugou and Izuku have a deal, in the sports festival they will fight. If Bakugou wins, Izuku must quit trying to be a hero. If Izuku wins, Bakugou has to stop being antagonizing. And be Izuku's friend. Lamely explained Ibarra, looking at Izuku as he stared down at the ground. Do you think you'll lose? Concernedly gasped Pony, asking the question Izuku had been asking himself ever since the deal had been made, and it was a question that had only one answer. He didn't know. Bakugou had been training for years to be a hero. He had a fighting style. He knew his quirk and used it to the fullest that he could manage, not to mention the fact that his explosion got stronger the longer a fight lasted. Meanwhile H had been training for 10 months, going on 11, had the bare basics of a fighting style he couldn't pull off properly, could only handle 5% of one for all. Danger Sense wouldn't do much good for an AoE attack. Black Whip was still new and untested, but unlike Bakugou, Izuku had a way of quickly recovering his stamina at least. I don't know. Honestly huffed Izuku, he had two weeks to either come up with a way to get into the third and final stage of the sports festival, or accept the fact that his dream of being a hero was about to be cut short. I don't think Bakugou is your only worry, confidently stated Ijiro, jabbing his finger at Izuku with a grin, a fire of determination burned in the redhead's eyes as he stared at his bro. After all, if I beat you then your deal with Bakugou will be null and void, determinedly declared Ijiro, clenching his right hand into a fist and held it out to Izuku, who could only stare at his friend. Bakugou was not his only concern, since every first year in the hero course would be gunning for first place. Speech, hey what is up? Shouting, oh my god damn toe. Thinking, she looks pretty cute. Quirk notification. What was more worrying? Fighting a hero, whose kicks could shatter boulders with ease, or participating in an event that was compared to the Olympics and broadcasted worldwide. Izuku's left eye twitched violently, as the teen in question could feel the 3% of one for all course through his body, as he threw up both of his arms and a cross over his head, trying desperately to see how he compared to Yuzujiyama, who was greatly limiting herself. Despite challenging one for all to strengthen his body, Izuku didn't even last a second as his knees buckled from the force of Yuzujiyama's kick, before the dating sim's protagonist's knee slammed into the sandy ground a second later. A minute, roughly estimated Izuku, sighing in relief as Yuzujiyama took her heel off of his forearm, allowing Izuku to bend over and put his hands onto the ground, trying to take off as much stress from his body as possible. Not horrible for a brat, who couldn't even do the splits when we started. Honestly hummed Yuzujiyama, who didn't look at all winded from the brief exchange, which wasn't surprising for anyone present. Not that you can still do the splits, but you might actually do well in the sports festival later, if there's fighting in it. But, I'm sure you'll do grand from here on out. Nonchalantly admitted Yuzujiyama, not at all phased as she simply turned around and started walking away, leaving Izuku alone to catch his breath on the beach. You make it sound like you're not training me anymore after this. Tiredly panted Izuku, pushing himself back onto his feet with some difficulty, swiping away the sweat that had started running down his forehead during the brief spar. Cause I'm not, All Might said to train you up until the sports festival, and here it is. Casually stated Yuzujiyama, turning around and looking at Izuku with an unimpressed stare, the closest thing to a disappointed look she had ever given to Izuku. You're aware that each minute I'm not out patrolling is a minute someone could be in need of saving, right? Besides, heroes are paid on how much they do, and I have to pay my bills somehow. Dismissively huffed Yuzujiyama, turning around and intending on leaving Izuku now, only for her to halt as the hairs on the back of her neck slowly started rising. 
her animalistic instincts knew Izuku was getting ready to do something. As much as Izuku didn't want to be greedy, he needed the training to catch up with everyone. The only reason he was considered strong was from one for all, which took his basic and stiff fighting style to a whole new level. If he wanted to save people and not be the one who needed saving, he would need every moment of training he could get. I want you to train me more, bluntly stated Izuku, standing up and tried to appear as impressive as possible, which probably wasn't that impressive, but it was the best he had. Iwaha, boisterously laughed Yuzujiyama, throwing her head backwards as she bellowed with laughter, slowly curling over with her arms crossed over her stomach, and tears gathering in the corners of her eyes. Oh, you're actually serious, slowly asked Yuzujiyama. The smile on her face rapidly disappeared in a matter of seconds, as she stared at the green-haired brat in front of her. I'm as serious about this as my dream of becoming a hero is, confidently answered Izuku. But despite his brave appearance, Izuku was incredibly worried. He knew that Yuzujiyama was only training him because All Might cashed in a favor, and the woman in question never took on a hero in training, so his chances of actually getting work experience with her was slim to non-existent at best. It was silent as the rabbit-themed woman stared at the green-haired boy. As she observed the brat in front of her, she knew that Izuku had potential, anyone who met him knew that, but the issues were his instincts and fighting style. She was confident she could help him with both of them, hell, she was sure she was the best person for the cause, but he just couldn't keep up with her, meaning that Izuku would be slowing her down in her hero work. Please, softly asked Izuku, activating and stared Yuzujiyama in her eyes, his hands balled into fists in desperation, as he stared at the hero in front of him. If, and I mean if, you manage to impress me during the sports festival, I will send you an offer. Slowly spoke Yuzujiyama, the words were almost foreign on her tongue, as she actually played with the idea of taking on a student. A smile grew on Izuku's face as he looked at Yuzujiyama, as he silently accepted the mission from Dating Sims, a cool little feature that had been unlocked recently. Now, all Izuku had to do was impress Yuzujiyama, who was known for being a lone wolf and not wanting to take on a student. It was a lot easier to say that than do, since everyone would be gunning for the number one spot during the sports festival. The locker room was filled with excited chatter and laughter. The students of Wano were nervous, more some than others. But there was a tenseness in the room that easily blanketed everyone present, nearly suffocating the joyful, yet nervous atmosphere. Makigu stared at Izuku, his red eyes occasionally shifting over towards Todoroki, who had a passive look on his face as he too glanced between Izuku and Bakugou. You are not helping. Stiffly grumbled Izuku, he was subconsciously glancing between the two as well, they were his biggest obstacles as well as his biggest opportunities, in order to impress Yuzujiyama. I wonder what's happened between the monster trio, casually asked Kaminari, an easy grin on his face as he sat beside Kayoka, dangling his feet off of the ground and slowly kicking them about. Really dude, monster trio, exasperatedly sighed Kayoka, rolling her eyes at the blonde's antics, but she could see his point, and he did make a lot of sense for once, not that she would ever admit it aloud. Kaminari, you must apologize for calling Izuku and Todoroki monsters. Robotically ordered Tenya, doing his absolute best to keep a small smile off of his face, at his attempted joke. The locker room went silent as Todoroki stood up, his chair scrapped against the ground as he rose, standing above everyone else as he sauntered over to Izuku. His eyes were blank on the surface, but as Izuku looked into Todoroki's mismatched eyes, he could see one emotion as clear as day. Hate. Gulping as he mimicked Todoroki's actions, Izuku walked stiffly to Todoroki, who had paused in the center of the room and stared at Izuku. I am stronger than you, bluntly stated Todoroki. He didn't even bat an eye as everyone looked at him. The room had gone deathly silent now. Yet, everyone thinks you are the stronger in the class. Is it because of your immense strength like All Might, or is there something else? Furiously asked Todoroki, frostily staring down at Izuku, eerily similar to how Bakugo used to look down at him. Bakugo did look down on him, but the blonde in question had been doing it so long you couldn't really tell. Perfect, immediately decided Izuku, grateful for dating Sim's options, since all of them were actually very good, but the first one was perfect for this situation. Strength alone is meaningless, it is what you do that makes you strong, that is why people think I am strong, I do what I do for others. Calmly explained Izuku, the tension in the air came crashing down on everyone present, before Bakugou stomped towards the duo, a scowl on his face. Shitty nerd, you poor attempt of a Canadian flag, I am going to beat you both black and blue, and win. You hear me, I will be the one to win. Loudly snarled Bakugou, bloody red eyes seemed to glow with anger, and then both Todoroki and Izuku looked at him. Then your bitch ass will have to leave. Lily added Bakugou, glowering at Izuku with glee. Small crackles and pops came from the blonde's hands as he stared at Izuku. You guys ready? Calmly asked Izuku, doing his best to remain unfazed from the reminder of their deal, turning his back on both Todoroki and Bakugou a second later, glancing over at his friends, all of whom seemed a lot more calm than everyone else. Not a second later did the loudspeaker whine to life, the buzz of excitement that accompanied it wasn't far behind, as all hostility and tension diminished immensely, and the sports festival had officially begun. 
As the class got up to walk out of the locker room, Izuku's heart was pounding in his chest. Two of the heaviest hitters in 1A, arguably the entirety of the first years of UA, were gunning for him. Which would be horrible any other time, except Izuku needed their attention, so his friends could continue the plan. That was actually very sweet of dating sims. Air as was. Hundreds of footsteps echoed through the air, as each class slowly made their way out of the locker room, joining behind one as they walked, increasing the overall noise as the tunnel started darkening. The sounds of cheers reached Izuku's ears, followed by the gradual lightening of the tunnel as they neared the end of it, and the sound was close to deafening. Someone bumped his shoulder, making Izuku gulp as he looked at who did it, seeing Mina wink at him as she blew a raspberry at him, as they all emerged from the tunnel. Saying there was thousands of people in front of him would be inaccurate, tens of thousands was a lot more accurate, and despite being so far away, Izuku could see dozens of heroes patrolling the stadium. There's going to be some sort of event to knock out the majority of the people for the first round. I just hope they all know what they have to do. Worriedly mulled Izuku, glancing around the horde of one of students, nodding at his friends, intending on getting them all through the first round, so they would have a chance to shine. Hey, hey, hey listeners, here is 1A, the crazy class that was attacked and triumphed over actually villains in their first year of training. Energetically howled present Mike, the man was actually loud enough to make the speakers throughout the stadium screech from the volume, and the crowd was going wild for it. That's a lot of people, nervously mumbled Achako, she looked flushed from all of the attention, and Izuku could not blame her, since nearly everyone was focused on 1A, the class that had survived a villain attack. Let's not forget their sister class. 1B, loudly added present Mike, what was curious to the green-haired dating sims protagonist was the fact that he couldn't feel a single heroine from the approaching class. Not that it was an issue to anything, but Izuku had half expected to see a heroine in 1B. Wow, I thought a lot of girls got into UA Hero course this year, but every girl was put in 1A, amazedly gasped by Jiro, making everyone who was interested in 1A look backwards, noticing the sister class of 1A that was solely composed of males. Now, now, look at those attention-seeking bastards. Snidely huffed an approaching blonde, everyone in 1A reeled back from the unexpected insult, especially since none of them wanted the attention, they didn't want to be put into the spotlight. Who are you calling a bastard, you sad excuse of a bitch? Loudly snarled Bakugu, smoke immediately started wafting up from his palms as he glared at the blonde, who merely smirked at Bakugu in response. You, you son of a bitch. All of you have been hogging the spotlight since day one, leaving us, class 1B behind in the shadows, as you've been using the USJ incident to bolster your hero career. Mockingly cackled the blonde, before he stiffened in place, his blue eyes widening in fear as his gaze swept over the class, before slowly landing on Kirishima. You know we nearly died there, that's not a really manly thing to do. Loudly growled Ijiro, it sound foreign coming from the redhead. Yet everyone from one understood why he was like that. Even Bakugu and Todoroki understood the hostility from Ijiro, who wouldn't be traumatized from a near-death experience. That is all of the classes. Now the part everyone has been waiting for. The introduction to the sports festival. Dramatically howled present Mike, fully aware of the whirlwind of emotions going on between the students bellow, and knew fully well that Nito was the cause of it. I know, but my friends know what I can do already, and I know what they can all do, but we each decided to keep one technique to ourselves if we do fight. Stiffly agreed Izuku, his heart was pounding inside of his chest at the fact he was being viewed by hundreds of thousands of people throughout the world, maybe even millions, perhaps billions. How is it going anyway? Curiously asked Izuku, keeping an eye on the stage in front of him, as Midnight strutted her way towards the center of it, giving every male who was watching a healthy blush on their face. Now that I have your attention, may I have the first-year representative, the student who scored highest in the entrance exam, Midoriya Izuku, come up and give his speech. Excitedly cheered Midnight, everyone who knew the green-haired dating sims protagonist in question looked at him, as Izuku froze in shock at the sudden attention. He wasn't told he had to give a speech. The entire stadium went silent as everyone in one stood to the side, leaving Izuku in the center of the passageway of his classmates, all of whom besides Todoroki and Bakugu looked at him expectingly, as if they knew he had some grand speech lined up. Hesitantly and fearfully, Izuku took a step forward, his heart pounded inside of his chest as he took a second step forward, slowly passing each of his classmates as he did so. For today, nearly everyone present was someone who would stand against him, so they could accomplish their goals, and he would do the same to them. Izuku wanted to be a hero, and in order to save everyone he came across, he had to be the strongest. Yuraka gave him a thumbs up, Ijiro grinned at him, Ida stiffly nodded at his friend, Pony smiled, Mina winked at him, Todoroki stared at him, a fire burning in his mismatched eyes, and Bakugu. Don't forget the deal, Deku. Gently hissed the blonde gremlin, bloody red eyes staring down into Izuku's emerald green, a grin on the blonde's face as he could hardly wait to put the teen in front of him into his place. I haven't kekken. Nervously answered Izuku, Yuzujiyama's deal wouldn't matter if he couldn't beat Bakugu, and everything hinged on the inevitable fight between himself and the explosive team beside him. 
stepping onto the stairs that would bring him up onto the stage. Izuku shuddered at the fact that so many people were paying attention to him, and he had to give a speech he hadn't had any time to prepare for. Stopping beside the microphone, Izuku looked around at his friends who encouraged him, the teacher's box where All Might was, and around the stadium, where he was sure Yuzujiyama was. Can I afford to not be ready? Mentally asked Izuku, his heart was pounding in his chest, loud enough for the green-haired teen to hear it in his ears. His dating Sims was kind enough to speed up his perception of time, to the point where everyone else looked like they were at a standstill. Now all he had to do was give an awe-inspiring speech. <laughs> what is Ligma? Confusedly thought Izuku, he had never heard of such a thing before, nor had he heard Recovery Girl ever talking to the explosive blonde gremlin before. Okay, so either two fairly good speeches, or a joke, that would most likely end up with Bakugu trying to kill me, if he fell for it. Nervously noted Izuku, if the event or the possible backlash wasn't as serious, Izuku would have loved to have seen how the explosive blonde would react. But for now he needed a speech that would ease everyone's nerves, and one way to do that for certain was to use while he was spoke. So, we've been attacked, nearly killed, and our dream was almost ended before it could truly begin. But, I have one thing to say to you villains out there, who are willing to try again. We are getting stronger, we will all be getting stronger, and getting ready for our next clash. And we shall break our limits, right here and right now. Plus Ultra, passionately roared Izuku, shooting his clenched fist into the air. Dating Sims was doing his absolute best to nullify the embarrassment he was currently feeling, and had apparently done something, since the stadium had fallen silent. The stadium was beyond silent. Izuku was fairly certain he could hear his own heart hammering along inside of his chest, as he waited for someone to do something, for something to make any noise, and break the silent spell that had fallen upon everyone present. Did he do that bad that people weren't sure how to feel about it? Almost as one, everyone in the stand stood up, their right fist in the air as they all stared down at him, and as Izuku stared around the stadium. He even noticed the students were doing the same, hell even Bakugu and Todoroki had their fists in the air. Plus Ultra, simultaneously roared everyone, the pounding in Izuku's chest subsided somewhat, as the teen in question hastily made his way off of the stage, his face flushed red from the effort. Trying his best to refocus himself, Izuku glanced around back at midnight, who was grinning as she looked upwards, emerald green eyes catching an earpiece in her left ear, as someone obviously told her something. Cracking her whip a few times, the excited chatter throughout the stadium rapidly died down, as they shifted their attention on the R-rated heroine. Now everyone, it is time for you youthful students to get hot and sweaty in the first event. Sultry purred midnight, the innuendo wasn't lost on those who had the talk, but everyone was looking at the massive billboard behind the woman that was rapid shifting through dozen of possible first stages until it started slowing down, landing on. A 5 kilometers obstacle race. Oh, it seems like the race has been picked. Everyone will be getting down and dirty with this. Happily explained midnight, Izuku froze as he could hear someone panting near him, making Izuku slowly look around, his gaze being drawn to the ground beside him. It was Minda, who panting with a blush on his face as he stared at the woman. Minda, remember what we spoke about. Softly chastised Izuku, doing his best to divide his attention between midnight and Minda, which wasn't ideal, but the purple, ball-headed teen was his friend. Somehow... Dude, softly hissed Minda, Izuku was almost certain that he, along with everyone else could feel the perverted intent coming from his short friend, as Minda focused on Izuku, staring him dead in the eyes. Look at her boobs, their size are perfect, perkier than any one other girl's boobs here, and they contain the hopes and dreams of millions. Pervertedly declared Minda, everyone in one end and one B focused on the odd duo, before Izuku watched the crowd slowly edge away from them, some looking on in a sickening form of respect, while everyone else's look disgusted, aka every female present. That was a scary and creepy thought. Without even giving a response, Izuku walked away, his expression sullen as he walked towards what he assumed to be the starting line. The thoughts on his mind were thoughts he wanted to purge from himself, since a small, perverted part of him agreed. Soon more students started crowding around the starting line, the people in 1A, 1B, and whoever else wanted to do well pushed and shoved their way to the front, as Izuku hung near the back, stretching his legs and back as he gazed around the area. So what's the plan, dork? Furiously hummed Kayoka, mimicking Izuku as she started stretching, kicking her legs out as she waited for the green-haired teen to give his answer. Achako told Momo the plan, and I overheard it. So, expectantly asked Kayoka, her eyes meeting Izuku's own, as a countdown started overhead, starting at 10. 10, 9, 8, you, Momo, Yuraka, Ida, Ijiro, Ibarra, Pony, and I will have a non-aggression deal, and if there is a team event we'll team up together, since we all know each other's quirks. Calmly explained Izuku, doing his best to keep his voice as low as possible. Fully aware that Kayoka could hear him with ease, he didn't want anyone else to hear them. 7, 6, 5, seems a bit basic, doesn't. Interestedly hummed Kayoka, eyeing Izuku from her peripheral vision, as she got ready to take off running, her right leg twitching forward, ready to take off. 
4. 3. Basic can be the best, since none of us know what's happening in the sports festival until it happens. Nonchalantly answered Izuku, closing his eyes and concentrating on the inferno inside of him, the blazing heat of one for all gushing throughout his skin, empowering him even further. 2. You're a lot more confident than you used to be, honestly noted Kayoka, and for once, Izuku didn't know what to say to that observation of him. 1. Green sparks started crackling across Izuku's exposed skin as the air temperature started lowering. Everyone's breath started becoming visible as explosions started cracking throughout the air. A glow came from Momo's left hand, Yuraka was lightening herself, Ida was revving his engines, and Minta just stood there, awkwardly. One for all, seven percent. Go. The second the buzzer echoed through the stadium, every student rocketed forward, some noticeably faster than others, either by some form of propulsion or natural speed, but nearly everyone was desperately trying to fit through the narrow tunnel to the other side. Izuku stood still for a second, trying to gather a rough idea of what this race would involve, as students shoved past him, ignoring the green-haired teen. Ready? Curiously asked Izuku, increasing the percentage of one for all flowing through his body, rapidly approaching the point that made his bones creak and groan with any form of movement but it should be enough to do what needed to be done. One for all, 14%. With more force than most people could ever muster, Izuku launched himself forward, the hairs on his body standing up as a burst of cold shot through the stadium, a block of ice encasing the tunnel, keeping more than half of the competition trapped at the starting line. Not at all faced from the fact that the tunnel was now sealed shut, Izuku bent his knees and jumped, shooting through the air. Izuku's eyes were firmly locked into his target, the roof of the stadium above the tunnel, it was had the lowest roof in the stadium, most likely for situations like this. Both of Izuku's arms shot forward, desperately reaches for the ledge that was rapidly approaching him, fingers clawing into the hard plaster the second his body collided with the wall, trying to keep himself from falling back down into the crowd below. With a grunt of effort, Izuku managed to pull himself up onto the roof, fully aware of the fact that there was a literal corridor of ice blocking everyone beneath him, but now Izuku was free to do what he needed to do. Scanning the limited view he had of the obstacle course, Izuku blanched as he saw multiple zero-pointers looming off in the distance, which luckily weren't moving at that moment in time. Some would have called it foolish of him to be not running on ahead, but Izuku wanted the extra information on what was to come, since it gave dating sims just a little bit more time to assimilate Black Whip. Black Whip was a strange quirk, it was definitely made from the energy aspect of one for all, Izuku was certain of that. But it was solid and sentient to a sense, since whenever Izuku tried to use it, it went wild, yet Dating Sims was able to control it to some degree. One of the best aspects about Black Whip, besides giving him a ranged attack and a way of binding his opponents, was the fact that it could be used as a bandage for Izuku, allowing him to use even more of one for all for a limited time, and not put too much stress on his bones, but it was the same for his opponent, cushioning Izuku's blows. It's close to a 3% reduction in total. Idly recalled Izuku, leaning forward and taking off in a sprint, green flickers of energy dancing across his skin as Izuku ran across the rooftop, rapidly getting faster to the point where Iida would be having to try in order to be faster than him. Still, having my blows cushioned is a lot better than breaking my bones. Honestly mused Izuku, launching himself off of the rooftop with enough force to leave a crack in it, as the green-haired teen soared forward, sailing above the horde of students who were struggling to get past Todoroki's field of ice. A few minutes to cover five kilometers. Easy. Oh, what is this? Midoriya is flying above the competition, but he is still quite far from the front runners, who are Bakugu, Todoroki, and Ida. Lively shouted present Mike, grinning from ear to ear from the commentator box, as multiple small drones flew throughout the obstacle course, sending back videos to the man for him to comment on. What are your thoughts on this eraser? Curiously chuckled present Mike, looking at his partly mummified friend, who only gave his obnoxious friend the stink eye. I believe that the hero course has the highest chance of getting through the next round, even though there is only 42 available places for the second round. But I cannot dismiss the possibility that a person from the general studies or the support course from getting first place. Logically hummed Aizawa, though silently he had a strong suspicion on who was going to do well in the race, most likely even get first. I cannot speak for Vlad, but in terms of overall speed in 1A, it is Yeyurazu, Ashido, Tenya, Todoroki, Bakugu, and the problem child. If Yeyurazu had a license for a motorcycle she would win it, though if Ashido had more stamina and was able to produce a continuous stream of acid, she could do well. And Tenya just needs to train his quirk more. Idly noted Aizawa, he was too interested in the whole ordeal, since the first round was mainly used to weed out the people who weren't interested in going on or capable of going on. The groaning of metal ahead of him made Izuku purse his lips, since a zero-pointer was utterly engulfed in an iceberg, and was in the process of falling over, which would block a lot of the students from getting through for a while. Green eyes landed on Ijiro, who was casually jogging through all of the chaos going on. The sharp-teeth teen flashed his friend a smile as he made his way past Izuku, jogging underneath the falling zero-pointer without a care in the world. Yeah, if Ijiro survived being punched by Namu, I doubt this would hurt him, but as long as nobody else runs underneath it, I'm sure everyone will be okay. 
calmly answered Izuku, pausing in order to let the zero-pointer fall, since it would be a lot faster getting over the behemoth than running around it. Are you stupid? You are nowhere near as durable as I am. Get out of there, you fool, loudly bellowed a silver-haired, who dashed past Izuku and was making a beeline towards Ijiro, making the red-headed pause and turn around and point at himself. Yes, you. You cannot withstand what I can, worriedly shouted the silver-haired teen as Izuku took a glance upwards. The zero-pointer was almost finished tipping over now at least, and Ijiro had made it out of the center of the rapidly increasing shadow of the zero-pointer. No, you are the idiot. I am unbreakable, you can't withstand this, dramatically challenged Ijiro, who proceeded to run back at the silver-haired teen, and both of them were started sprinting at the other, colliding with the other in the center of where the zero-pointer was about to land, grappling one another in order to get the other one out. Let me carry you out, simultaneously yelled both teens, Izuku knew Ijiro activated his quirk, and the silver-haired teen flashed silver, before the zero fell on both of them. You're alive, graciously shouted both Ijiro and the silver-haired teen a second later, before both of them bursted out through the zero-pointer with their quirks active, Ijiro with his hardening, while the silver-haired teen was covered in steel. You, are so similar to me, now heroes might look over me, defeatedly mumbled both teens, who were still both poking out of the zero-pointer, a depressive aura cloaking both of them. Izuku dashed forward a second later, emerald green eyes focused on the two teens currently stuck in the zero-pointer, sure if he got first place in the first event. It might have impressed Yuzuchiyama a good bit, but both Ijiro and the silver-haired teen deserved a chance, since of them tried saving the other, no matter how idiotic that was. Leaping upwards and landing on the remains of the zero-pointer, Izuku gripped both Ijiro's and the silver-haired teen's hand, before easily yanking them both out. Thanks dude, simultaneously thanked both teens, only to glance at Izuku before looking at one another. And Izuku didn't know what to think of the fact that both teens mirrored the other perfectly as they used their arms to hide the tears gathering in their eyes, as they ran towards the next obstacle. Green sparks of energy flittered off of Izuku's skin as the teen continued his mad dash forward. He had wasted a lot of time waiting for the zero pointer, but it was time to show everyone what he was made of, to show off to both heroes, civilians, and villains. That he was here. Dust flew up from beneath his feet, Izuku was solely focused on what was ahead of him, trusting danger sense to alert him of any incoming threat. As Izuku covered dozens of meters with every second, rapidly moving past Ijiro and the silver-haired teen, slowly but surely, Izuku started passing other people, a lot of them he didn't recognize, but knew that the majority of them were from the full male hero class, class 1b, as well as the odd student from other classes. Bakugou and Todoroki have both cleared the canyon in seconds, and Tenya is far behind them, he is already halfway through it. Happily informed present Mike, knowingly making every student who wanted to get to the next round run even harder, purposely igniting a fire, since the three leading students were well past the halfway mark at this point. Green Eyes barely acknowledged the message, instead focusing on the crop of brown hair ahead of him. Achako Yuraka was already at the second obstacle, and an idea started forming in Izuku's mind, one that would involve one of his toes being broken. Skidding to a halt, an accidental kicking up a cloud of dust in the process, Izuku coughed as he swatted the dust away, pursing his lips at the small mistake he had made. Izukun, I thought you would have been at the front by now, confusedly gasped Yuraka, which made a lot of sense, since the green-haired teen had wasted a good bit of time already. Sure he could have ran like his life depended on it at the start of the race, but he needed to impress Yuzujiyama, and not a lot impress the woman. Uh huh, yeah, I kinda got sidetracked by Kirishima and his doppelganger, but I've an idea and I need your help. Bluntly admitted Izuku, earning Achako's attention in an instant, as the green-haired teen stepped closer to the brown-haired girl. I can jump across the canyon, though in the process I'd break a bone doing so, but if you and I work together, we can both get across the canyon quickly, and I won't have to break a bone. Hurriedly explained Izuku, his heart pounding as a wave of students passed the duo. Pony even flew past them on one of her horns. No matter how shaky her balance was, she would definitely finish ahead of the majority of students, if they didn't hurry up. Deal. Happily chirped Achako, parting Izuku's shoulder, releasing the gravity off of his body, and the only reason the green-haired teen wasn't floating away was from the weight of his shoes. Awkwardly, Izuku picked Achako up, adjusting her until she was in his arms, being carried bridal carry, and both teens were blushing at the close contact of the other, the UA sports uniforms did very little to hide how toned and muscular there was. Trapping her own arm and releasing her own gravity, Achako shuddered as the sparks of Izuku's quirk hit off of her skin, feeling the power each spark contained and it was exhilarating. Not saying anything, Izuku ran forward and jumped, easily rising a few dozen feet into the air in an instant, passing out other students with ease, clearing the halfway mark of the canyon in just a few seconds. It didn't take long for the duo to reach the climax of their ascent, as the weight of their clothing gradually started taking the duo down towards the ground past the canyon. 
Achako could only stare at Izuku, he was her friend, and she wouldn't deny that Izuku was certain built for his age, the muscles he had been building up were for his quirk, that required him to be strong or risk breaking a bone or five, and a lot of girls would definitely appreciated them. Slowly Achako could feel her cheeks warm up as she stared at her friend, who had helped her so many times before, he was what a hero should be, someone who saved those he could without hesitation. It was. Admirable. Izuku's feet skidded against the ground as the green-haired teen desperately tried correcting himself. His and Achako's weightless bodies wasn't doing them much help at that moment. And in response to that, Yuraka touched the pads on her fingers off one another, returning their gravity to them. Sure the deal was to merely leap across the canyon before going solo again, despite the extra luggage in Izuku's arms, the green-haired dating sim's protagonist didn't even realize the fact he was running forward with Achako in his arms. Izuku nervously stammered Achako, her arms were wrapped tightly around Izuku's neck, as she did her absolute best not to blush at the very, very close contact to the person, who she was slowly falling for, amazed at the fact that the green-haired dating sim's protagonist could carry her so easily. Do you want to let me down? Hesitantly asked Achako, they had passed a lot of people at this point, they were definitely in the top 10 at this point, perhaps even the top 5 if the lack of people was any indication. <laughs> Izuku grimaced at the second option the moment his eyes scanned over it, immediately getting rid of that possible option since that was a tad creepy, it was something Minda would say, and Izuku wasn't sure how Achako would take it at that moment. The first option seemed a tad dismissive, a girl could take it as him being insensitive, and that he was only using them for their quirk, which was not true at all, so Izuku was sure of the fact that the third option was the best choice. My intelligence is actually really helpful. Amazedly realized Izuku, looking down at Archako as he selected the third option, slowly down immensely to the pace of a brisk jog. Are you sure? You'll probably get a better place in the run with me carrying you and running. Slowly asked Izuku, aware of the fact that it sounded rather arrogant of himself to say such a thing, but it would correspond to Achako's goal on doing well in the sports festival. The, yeah, I want to stand up by myself. Determinedly declared Achako, wriggling free from Izuku's arms, both teens blushing while doing so, before the brown-haired girl was on her own two feet, and looking Izuku in his eyes. Do well Achako. Honestly spoke Izuku, feeling a smile grow on his face as he looked at the bubbly girl in front of him, who smiled back at him. That was odd. Hey dating sims, what happens when I inspire people? It happened to Ijiro during the USJ attack. Confusedly asked Izuku, the events of USJ were still as clear as Izuku's mind as if it was yesterday. Though the text saying he had inspired Ijiro had been forgotten, but now was as good as time as any to find out, even though he was in the middle of a race. It was useful to say the least, being able to temporarily increase the stats of a person could be incredibly helpful, since from what Izuku had seen of this particular ability so far, it let Ijiro survive a punch from Namu with minimal injury, and he wasn't even sure what Yuraka's boosted to her. If he found a way to activate this ability at will, Izuku was fairly sure he could help save a lot of people, since there was a possibility that Izuku could somehow increase a person's natural regeneration, so they could hang on until a medic came around. What's this? Midoriya is so close to catching up with Bakugou and Todoroki. Excitedly screeched present Mike, breaking Izuku out of his musing, realizing that there was a tingling sensation going down his spine, before the tingling turned into a burn, and then Izuku felt his feet being forced off the ground with a burning sensation forming in his forearms. Oh, Midoriya got caught in Bakugou's explosion. Loudly announced present Mike, grimacing as he could see the burns forming on Izuku's forearms, and what was worse it was solely Izuku's fault for not paying attention to his surroundings. Stay out of the way you shitty Deku. Furiously howled Bakugou, an explosion roaring to life from his sweaty palms, rocketing him forward, as Todoroki continued running forward, propelling himself forward with blocks of ice forming beneath his left foot. That's oddly combat related. Confusedly noted Izuku, activating as he got back onto his feet and stared at Todoroki and Bakugou, grimacing at the fact that neither of them as much as flinched from the skill. I can equip titles, slowly asked Izuku, who had been certain that his titles had been passively equipped this whole time, which meant that his lessons with Mina could have been a lot easier, and all of pain he had been suffering during his training for the sports festival could have been severely lessened at least. Can you equip masochist please? Dryly asked Izuku, his skin burning from the intense heat of Bakugou's explosion, and the cold air from Todoroki's ice was causing it to stink. Charm, 63. Intelligence, 54. Aura, 64. Title, Masochist. Immediately the burning sensation dulled. The burning sensation from using one for all for so long also dulled. It didn't disappear completely by any means, but the pain had been lessened a lot. His right foot stomped on the ground. Green sparks of electricity crackled across Izuku's body as the teen's eyes sharped, suddenly feeling more. Complete in a sense, as he barreled forward, ignoring the pain he was suffering. Midoriya is up and running from Bakugou's explosion like it was nothing. Is there nothing stopping this young juggernaut? Loudly announced present Mike, riling up the crowd and Bakugou, Izuku knew that it was the man's job, but he really didn't appreciate it at all. Both Todoroki and Bakugou have made it to the next obstacle. 
The minefields, they won't kill you, but they have enough of a punch in them to send anyone falling down. Excitedly whooped present Mike, as Izuku spotted where both of the other were, before Todoroki was engulfed in a pink explosion. Oh no, oh no, oh no, worriedly thought Izuku, entering the minefield at a breakneck pace in an attempt to catch up with Bakugu and Todoroki, who were launching explosion and ice at the other, only for a sharp tingle to race up Izuku's spine a second later. Do it, immediately agreed Izuku, increasing the amount of one-for-all flowing through him by just a small margin, propelling himself an inch further than where he should have been landed, narrowing avoiding a landmine. Charm, 63. Intelligence, 54. Aura, 64. Title, Webhead. Unlike when Masochist was equipped, Izuku felt the burning sensation intensify throughout his body, and it felt like he had no title equipped as he ran through the minefield, steadily closing the distance, the constant tingling of danger sense running up his spine, alerting him of any mines nearby. It was odd, being on par with two of the strongest people in the year, despite there being a considerable gap in training time between him and them. Not even a year for the green-haired dating sims protagonist and the other two had spent their whole lives getting ready for their dreams. A slight tremor ran through the ground beneath him, followed by the sound of an explosion going off behind, which made Izuku spare a quick glance backwards, trying to spot who had caused the explosion, almost missing a step, as a ball of vines was casual tearing its way through the minefield, making a trench behind it. Emerald eyes widened as they watched the ball of vines steadily gain on him. The mines that would have stopped it were being shoveled aside with ease, not affecting the ball of vines at all as they exploded. Ibarra, confusedly mumbled Izuku, it was a creative use of her quirk, essentially turning herself into a plow in order to remove all of the mines in her path, but she was also helping out everyone else as well. Whipping his head around, Izuku felt his heart pause for a split second as he saw Bakugu and Todoroki almost out of the minefield, and the finish line was only a few hundred meters away from them. Red Shoe sunk into the ground as Izuku took off, dating Sims didn't waste any time in wrapping strands of energy from Black Whip around his feet and legs, cushioning his limbs from the backlash of 15% of one for all. Stay right there you shitty Deku, I've got this in the bag. Determinedly snarled Bakugu, his right hand twisting around with an explosion, letting Bakugu to turn around midair in order to glare at Izuku dead in the eyes, not waiting as he held one of his arms out. Die, loudly barked Bakugu, engulfing Todoroki in an explosion, who clearly hadn't been expecting it, since the dual-haired teen tumbled to the side, and Izuku easily overtook Todoroki, getting into second. <laughs> Holding out his right hand towards the explosive blonde gremlin, Izuku let a shaky smile grow on his face, as they both approached the finish line. Bakugu a few meters in front of him, and was smirking back at him, as the finish line rapidly approached, and black sparks started gathering in Izuku's right hand. Thanks for the win, Kakan. Shakily thanked Izuku, multiple black whips exploded free from Izuku's right hand, shooting off towards Bakugu, whose red eyes were wide with surprise as they wrapped around the flying teen. I respect you a lot, you know, softly mumbled Izuku, his feet digging into the ground as he hauled his right arm backwards with as much force as possible flinging Bakugu backwards. Something creaked in his arm before it popped, his right arm getting slightly longer before the mother of all explosions roared to life behind him, sending Izuku tumbling over the finish line, as Bakugu rocketed past him a second later. A hiss escaped Izuku's lips as Bakugu slammed his shoulder into Izuku's own, hard enough to make tears gather in Izuku's eyes, as Bakugu glared at him. The winner by a hair's breadth is Midoriya Izuku and in second place Bakugu Katsuki. Dramatically roared present Mike, his voice bellowing over from the roars of excitement from the crowd as a camera zoomed in on the two teens. You're not telling me something about your quirk, Deku. Loli spoke Bakugu, he didn't seem livid like he normally did, instead Bakugu looked sullen as he walked away from Izuku. That did very little to ease Izuku's worries. Now that the first 42 people have finished, I guess it's time that I talk about how your second round will go. Seductively mused Midnight, licking her lips as her eyes roamed the crowd of students in front of her, everyone from 1A and 1B had passed, as well as the pink-haired girl from supports and some purple-haired guy who looked like Aizawa's son had passed. In 42nd place, they are worth 5 points, in 41st place is 10 points, and goes like that up to 2nd place, with the sole exception of 1st place, and Midoriya is worth. 10 million points. You now have 15 minutes to get into a team of 3 or 4. Amusedly commented Midnight, her eyes aglow with a sadistic light, as she focused on Izuku, who was painfully grabbing his dislocated right arm as he stared up at the screen behind Midnight. Cavalry battle. I am so glad I've that deal made with the others now. Relievedly decided Izuku, hoping he could make it through this round, so he could go to Recovery Girl and get his arm popped back into its socket, since right now it was useless. <laughs> Izuku, this is perfect. With you in the spotlight my babies will shine. Excitedly squealed Hatsume as she collided into Izuku, one of her gadgets slamming into Izuku's elbow, making the green-haired dating sims protagonist winch as his friends started making their way over to him. So who else are we going to have on our team? Loudly asked Mei, staring at the people who were gathering Izuku, making mental notes of what she saw and what she could work with. 
We could make a deal between the two teams if it's easier. Idly pointed out Kayoka, nodding to herself as she spoke, as she watched the competition gather around Bakugu, Todoroki, and Fumikich. There's nine of us here, meaning there'll be two teams with one person left over, but the two teams could work together and help the other keep their points and gather them, but the question is, who will go? Helpfully explained Kayoka, making everyone look nervously at one another, since nobody wanted to leave, since it could ruin their chance of getting into the next round, but nobody wanted to see their friend getting booted out of the deal either. I've an idea. Happily announced Ijiro, smiling wide enough for his teeth to glisten in the light, as he pointed at himself, then at Pony, and then Momo. We can be Team 1, if we limit ourselves to teams of 3, then we can have a 3-way alliance. Gently informed Ijiro, keeping an eye out for anyone who could overhear them, since a lot of his friend group finished within the top 20, meaning they were all targets. As silently as he could, Ida walked over to Izuku, and gently grabbed onto Izuku's right wrist and wearily put the dislocated arm over the green-haired teen's head, and put the hand on his nape. The ground was quiet as they watched what was happening, as Izuku could feel his bones scraping off one another in his shoulder, before Ida yanked Izuku's arm to the left. Oh, loudly gasped Izuku, feeling his shoulder pop back into place, which felt like hell for the teen, before gripping onto his right arm, as if it would pop back out at any moment. So who do you want to team up with you, Izuku? Curiously questioned Achako. A small blush was on her face as she stared at her crush, which Izuku saw as clear as day. <laughs> now he had a choice to make. That's a wrap, people. I want to sincerely apologize for the delay in updates. I planned on taking December off from writing, so I could spend time with my parents. But at the end of the year I was involved in a small accident. That left my right arm badly broken, so typing was a hassle, and whatever time I did have free was spent on essential reading for my college course, so sorry about that. Midoriya found himself surrounded by a void. What? Where am I? What is going on? Midoriya exclaimed, trying to make sense of the vast ocean of darkness before him. As he gazed about, a text box appeared in his vision. Hesitantly, Midoriya stretched his hand out before tapping the text box. The moment he did, the young hero instantly recoiled as a hulking, black creature with an exposed brain, and an only vaguely humanoid body appeared from the shadows, the creature leering at him with bulging eyes and a hideous grin. Namu, the amalgamated villain, greetings, little hero. Please don't mind me. Tis just I, good old Namu. Midoriya was about to ask what in the world was going on, when another text box appeared before him. Midoriya stretched his hand towards the exit button, ready to leave this bizarre realm as quickly as possible. But the moment he did, Namu, the amalgamated villain, heh. You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Frustrated, Midoriya reached for new game before pressing it, as chapter select was completely blurred out. Not surprising since he had not completed any chapter to select. Namu, the amalgamated villain, story of the villain taker again. Interesting. Do you, by any chance, need a narrator? Do I have any choice? Midoriya asked. Namu, the amalgamated villain, heh, smart kid. Let's begin then. It will be my pleasure. You woke up one day with a dream. Harim full of villain girls. It was, however, not an easy dream to achieve. It would cost you your life. When villain girls are involved, no price is high enough. You said, as you ventured down to Tartarus. V-I-L-L-A-I-N-T-A-K-E-R. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Gamer Deku Dated Sims. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Spudlord for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section.